What is it about a one-on-one? -on -one? Mano a mano. Dog eat dog. There's a purity about it. One winner, one loser. It's beautiful. Win or lose. All or nothing. Me or you. That's how it's always been on the America's Cup. The America's Cup is now New Zealand's Cup. It's binary. It's brutal. It's addictive. For more than a century and a half, it's besotted some of the world's most powerful men. Giants of business. Winners by definition. And now, for the 36th time, here we are again. One defender trying to keep hold of the trophy. Three enemies at the gate. One will become their challenger. To earn the right to enter the ring, first they have to win the Prada Cup. There's been a qualifying series for over 50 years. Five weeks of one-on-one -on -one racing. Three teams at war. One will prevail. Only the best get a shot at the big time. So who's the favorite? Right now, we don't know. But we're about to find out. The journey to the 36th America's Cup starts now. Kia ora and welcome to Aotearoa, New Zealand, affectionately known around the world as the land of the long white cloud. A young nation of five million, proud of its cultural diversity and surrounded by spectacular natural beauty, stunning fjords, rugged mountains, lush forests and geothermal landscapes and 16,000 kilometres of coastline, which is why there's such a connection to Moana, the ocean. New Zealand is proud to be home to the 36th America's Cup. Host city, Auckland. In Māori, Tamaki Makoto, a place desired by many. And it's the desire of three challenges to be the one to wrestle the old mug of defender Emirates Team New Zealand. Three years of planning, designing, building and training are about to be put to the test. These futuristic AC-75s go head-to-head -head in combat for the very first time today. And the excitement is real. We begin the Cup journey with the America's Cup World Series. Three days of double round robin match racing. That's 12 races in 72 hours. At the completion, all four teams will be seeded for the Prada America's Cup Christmas race. One versus four, two versus three. Then the game begins for real with the Challenger Series on January 15, the Prada Cup. Four round robins, a semi and final to see who faces the defender, Emirates Team New Zealand in the Prada 36th America's Cup match starting March 6, 2021. Today, the perfect opening race. Defender against challenger of record, followed by American Magic and Enios Team UK. Race three has Enios backing up against Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli, with the final race of the day featuring Patriot against Te Rehotai of Emirates Team New Zealand. And in this 36th America's Cup, the best sailing experts in the world, Kenny Reid, former America's Cup skipper and president of North Sales, and former Artemis skipper, Nathan Outeridge. And Kenny, sailing's never seen anything like this before. Welcome, Stephen, and we have flying boats capable of 50 knots and crews who look more like rugby players than they do sailors. This event is dripping with intrigue, speculation, and rumor. Thanks to the total lack of racing for these teams in 2020, this series is really a denouement. And because of that, nobody really knows how effectively these sailors are going to be at taming these monsters. Nathan Outerich, today just feels different. Yeah, that's right, Kenny. It's the moment we've all been waiting for. All four teams have been here in Auckland for several months, testing and training in the beautiful summer weather. I've been following the progression of all the teams since they've arrived and it's very interesting to see the different design concepts they've each taken. The boats really do have their own unique look. Bring on the action.
Let's Go Racing, the team charged with holding on to the cup. Emirates Team New Zealand, the defenders of the America's Cup. And not since 2003 has a New Zealand team been the defender. That one didn't turn out very well for the Kiwis, but this feels different. A new class which they helped create, a very cohesive group of designers, engineers, and sailors. Team is still very much the mantra of Team New Zealand. Trimmer Glenn Ashby, flight controller Blair Took, and helmsman Peter Burling lead the way. Yeah, it's certainly a pretty exciting day. We're uh, really looking forward to getting out there. It's been a long time coming, and uh, you know these four days are really important for us as a team to, you know, in our preparations for the match next year. So, Kiwi fans, well, it doesn't get much better than this. We're on the close course today. Uh, south westerly breeze, sort of mid, maybe even high teens. Uh, so, you know, seeing these boats right up and close in the harbour is going to be unreal. Facing Emirates Team New Zealand, the challenger of record. Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli are back again for another attempt to win the America's Cup. This is their fifth attempt, having begun their quest back in 2000, competing here in Auckland. Helmsman duties are shared between Jimmy Spittle and Francesco Bruni. Jimmy's on the starboard wheel, Bruni on the port wheel. Both incredible sailors with decades of America's Cup experience between them. In typical Prada style, their boat looks beautiful. And now it's time to see if it's as fast as it looks. I think the official racing will uh, put the boats uh, closer together uh, a little bit more. Uh, obviously, there is a cup uh, to win, and uh, uh, the we're going to be pushing more and more. So maybe not as much as in the Prada Cup, but uh, the boats will get closer for sure. Today, we're on Stadium Course C in the harbor and back to the past when considering that the boats will actually start upwind. This match takes place on a classic upwind, downwind racetrack. Although the course may look more conventional to the average sailor, leg lengths of three and a half kilometers and a course width of only one and a half kilometers creates a real challenge for boat handling and staying up in the foils. Multiple laps around the track, finishing downwind, a 25 minute race is expected. It is a glorious Thursday afternoon, just uh, past eight minutes past three here in New Zealand. That's a Mangawika North Head. It's a volcanic cone and a perfect viewing platform for today's first race between Emirates Team New Zealand and Luno Rosa Prada Pirelli. Unfair, you might say, two helmsmen, Spittle and Bruni against Peter Burling. But boy, is it going to be special for you this afternoon. We're going to take you places you've never been before in this 36th America's Cup. We've got the best eyes on the water in back-to-back -back Olympic gold medalist Shirley Robertson. Stadium course, the feeling must be just tense. Stephen, I cannot stop grinning. You know, for years, the sport of sailing has been trying to deliver high speed, high drama action. And today, just look at this. It's sunny, it's windy. We've got the world's fastest sailboats. And tens of thousands of man hours, technology from all over the spectrum, avionics, Formula One, some of the smartest brains in engineering getting together to create the likes of which we've never seen before. And what a location, what a stadium to show the world what they are capable of. Boiling monohulls, sailing out wind at three times the wind speed. You know, the America's Cup always delights. There's always drama and always action around every corner. But it's already safe to say the AC36 already has the attention of sailing fans around the world. And I'm sure the next three months are going to change the game forever. Emirates Team New Zealand on port entry. They are allowed in at 2 minutes and 10 seconds to go. They come in falling and they look great on these beautiful conditions on the Waitamata Harbour. You saw Aranga Toto uh, in the foreground as we see Luna Rusa Prada Pirelli come into the pre-start. And now the tactics, now the mind games begin, gentlemen. Yeah, the defender against the challenger of record right out of the blocks. Uh, Nathan, the, the, fortunately, we saw great timing there. Uh, We've had, we've had some struggles here the last couple days in, in some of the practice racing, but I think they've worked a bunch of the bugs out, and, and I think we see some real racing today, some real hard racing. Yeah, that was a bang on entry for both teams, and what I find really interesting is that the starting box isn't massive, so these guys aren't really sailing full speed like what we saw in Bermuda in the pre-starts there. New Zealand entered in, put their windward foil down, and were just 
coasting and gliding, and now we can see the chase is on. Emirates Team New Zealand here will be turning back to the line fairly soon, and it'll be up to Luna Rossa to decide if they want to take the lead or if they're going to push. It'll be fascinating to see how much these boats really do interact. One of the skippers talked about preserving the assets. Well, my guess is you get competitive sailors like this out here, and all of a sudden, the boats just happen to come together a little bit quicker. Already straight into it here, aren't we? It's a very close overlap. It looks like to me Luna Rossa in the controlling position here to Lewis. And just as I say that, Emirates Team New Zealand roll over the bow, but I think both boats are a little bit early for this start still. Time and distance. Who's going to push who? The typical cat and mouse game. Just fantastic action right out of the box. So here we go. Three years and the wait is over as a new entry is written in the America's Cup storybook. 75 foot foiling monohulls in racing like you have never seen before. Let's go racing, everybody. My, my rank, my drop. Crossing. Pretty even start. Prada probably a little bit Still behind, good. fearing that they were going to be in bad air, uh, you know, in that kind of that wing wash all the way to the first boundary. So they just bail out right away, and pretty soon we're going to see split tacks back and forth, back and forth. Is this going to be a match race or is this going to be a drag race? All good. I don't think Luna Rossa could have held in that position for too much longer, so right choice at attack out. And when they come back together, they'll have the starboard tack advantage. I've sailed a lot on this racetrack. It's quite tri shifty. It pressures up and down, and so uh, already seeing such a big split between the two boats. be interesting to see who's got the first shift in this race. Big split can't be that big, though. It's only, let's see, 1.2 kilometers wide this racetrack and there's boundaries the team see the boundaries on screens in front of the helmsman so that they, they know when they're coming up on the boundaries let's get onto the water early thoughts surely of what you're saying Stephen, it's really puffy on this race course, just as Nathan was saying. It's a, it's a race course designed for straight fighting, for looking for opportunities. To me, the Kiwis look like they've done very well on that left-hand side. Fascinating scenario on the Prada boat because they have two helmsmen. They don't switch sides. We're going to see all kinds of differing opinions as to how to sail these brand new design concepts. Jimmy Spithill stays on the starboard wheel. Francesco Bruni stays on the port uh, wheel. Whereas you'll watch Peter Burling run around the front of the mast every time they tack. Totally different ways to, to skin this cat, so to speak. A pun from the past, maybe. Always uh, high and slow, eh? Always fast. Yeah, pressure coming. That's the face of Jimmy Spittle there. The you can hear the voice of mainsail trimmer Pietro Sibello talking to him about the modes that we're sailing. Keep pressing a little bit for... Stephen, one of the clear things that we're seeing that we didn't see a lot of during the practice races is really smooth tacks right now. So pretty good. I mean, you'd have to say flawless boat handling at this stage. Well, if you remember one of the aspects of the way these boats foil is keeping your eye on the nose. You talk a lot about them being bowed now, but how level. And I think the Shirley Robinson explained to us that when you look at particularly your Tirejo Tai Emirates Team New Zealand, it's like it's on rails. There's not a heck of a lot of movement on that boat. Aerodynamically, they're trying to fly these boats as low to the water as possible, almost touching the water, as Nathan continues to point out from his experience with the catamarans. You don't want to drag it through the water. You just want to try to cap it off, cap okay, that hole off on the water. Split. Yeah, I think we're still good. Okay. Same thing to go. One just having a little right. listen on board here. There's a lot of chat coming off Emirates team. He's in a lot more down. chat yeah, off it's this boat than what I remember hearing from them when they were racing the catamarans in Bermuda. And you'd have to say, Kiwis ain't take. slow, right? I mean, this is actually pretty to up we, We're talking about the differences Showing between late. boats, but the biggest yeah. difference right now, this guy's just pass. rip fast. Yellow, I mean, over late, yeah. standing by. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Three, two, one. All right. 
Shirley, what have you seen upwind so far? It looks from this position here quite shifty. What's it like at the top of the course? Yeah, good angle there. There's a bit more wind at the top of the course, Nathan, it, but you're right, it, it's really puffy. Uh, it's a great looking course. I mean, also the top marks are right beside the spectator fleet, and I'm sure the Kiwis, when they come round, will get a massive cheer from their fans. As Stephen said, they look like they're on rails. It also looks like they have another gear just extending the whole time. Go a little further. Come down three. Emirates Team New Zealand approaching the top gate for the first time and they are flying. And when you talk about crowd, well, in this part of the world we call it the home ground advantage. But look at the crowd and the viaducts, which is one of the areas that you can see this race and go. And Emirates Team New Zealand are around that top mark and they are heading down to that windward leg for the completion of the first lap. Just about 36 knots upwind amongst friends. Uh, I mean, it's just, who, who ever thought that sailboats would be going at such a pace? I mean, when we watched you guys in Bermuda, Nathan, we thought those, but these guys are narrower, that, that dreaded VMG phrase, they're, they're, they're closer to the wind and going faster. Luna Rossa Two, now approaching the one, top gate and they're going to take, as we see it, yeah. we could call that the left-hand mark as they... Oh, yeah. They attack and head into it towards the downward leg. Trip. Yeah, without doubt, these boats are very quick. You know, comparing them to the catamarans, there's only two appendages in the water. You've got the foil hanging out to lure it and yeah. one single rudder, whereas in Bermuda we had both rudders in the water. I've heard numbers from so these teams of upwards of 10 knots faster upwind and than what we were speed, doing uh, in Bermuda. Downwind, very similar boat speeds though. Just 40 knots, just 40 knots. I mean, they, they, how do you even talk about stuff like that? It's blowing, it's blowing 12 or 13 and they're going 40. My goodness. Emirates Team New Zealand in a commanding position and we haven't even completed the first leg of this lap. Remember, it is a three lap race that's up and down the course three times. And then the finish for this series will be at the bottom mark. Just for this series, the bottom marks will be considered the finish line. But what a magnificent sight it is from our helicopters. You see the stadium course ringed by, well, fanatical sailing fans here in Auckland. There is no question, though, that this is a very, uh, very lopsided sailboat race going on here right now. Uh, the Kiwis have been rumored for weeks to have come out of the blocks with this brand new boat. Remember, this is the second boat that each of these teams will have put in the water. They've, they've been rumored by the rest of the teams, by the press, by the people following it closely, that uh, they're quick, that the rest of the teams think they're quick and realize we got some catching up to do. But Nathan, I, I don't know if anybody saw them being this quick. This is, this is a crushing going on right now. Kenny, just look at that lead. It's like we haven't even done a lap yet. And these guys are already over 700 meters in front. It's a three lap race. It's, it's just staggering. And you know, I was watching the first upwind and surely maybe you can verify this, but it didn't look like Team New Zealand were doing anything special in terms of picking great shifts. It just looks like their boat's going very fast. Well, Nathan, I would have said they were on the wrong side. Less wind on that left-hand side, but still, it just seemed to be extending all the time. It's so impressive. What a schooling. If Emirates Team New Zealand were feeling any pressure, any sort of pressure after a practice loss to American Magic, they haven't shown any sign of that. They have come out of the gate in this opening race of the America's Cup World Series and are showing everybody that if you want to win this America's Cup, you're going to have to beat us as they approach the bottom mark for the first time. I don't... Don't miss going through that gate, by the way. It looked like that graphic uh, showed, showed the beach pretty <laughs> quick. <laughs> Emirates Team New Zealand rounding the bottom mark for the bottom gate for the first time. Take the left-hand mark. Yeah. Jive around that and head up, and that's the completion of lap number one of three. Pass yeah, yeah, over there, boys. Peter Burling. Yeah, it's under pace up here, going into good breeze. Pump attack in 30 seconds. 
the, the windage the windage on these boats when you're going so fast so so fast that the windage becomes Pressure. Pressure as more important than the hydro drag that they have uh, maybe maybe not more important but as important for sure and how they're all tucking themselves down inside these cockpits trying to keep their heads low You can imagine Peter Burling looking quietly across, not that he's that type of guy, and looking across saying, out of there, you boys. Oof. Not yet. Remember, the, the Kiwis have, <laughs> I don't think so, uh, the Kiwis have four days here of, tra of race training. And that's it. Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli going quick as they enter the top bottom gate for the first time and round on the left hand mark as you see it on your screen. And look at the challenge ahead. One lap completed for Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. Yeah, we were, we were saying, Nathan, the, these guys have four days of racing and then essentially they're on their own. And, and you go back again, we're going we're to reference the crazy event that yeah, was in yeah, Bermuda, yeah, exactly. and, but Balance but the, the similarities yeah. end there because these guys are on their own. They're not going to be racing. They're not going to be part of a series. They're not going to be part of any sort of training against other boats. And, and you got to believe these challenges are going to be getting better by the day. And boy, you better hope so if you're a challenger right now because this doesn't look pretty right out of the blocks. Man, like these guys have spent, you know, three years designing, developing these boats, sailing on their own. And this is the first time they're getting a real chance to check in. As you said, Team New Zealand have four days to really get a good feel for how they are compared to these other boats, areas they need to improve on. And after that, they're back on their own again. Clearly right now, Team New Zealand have the upper hand. They look to be much faster. The manoeuvres are looking very slick. You see they're exiting attack there at 23 knots of boat speed. They'll be easily be up over 30 knots very soon once again. Challenges will have a couple of months to keep working together, but early impressions say they're going to need that time to catch up. And, that, and, and working together may be slightly, uh, slightly off key because they don't help each other at all. The only way they help each other is to go out and compete every day. They all talk about every team talks about the need to improve every day. And we remember some of these development classes where you can gain knots from day to day, not tenths of a knot, like back in the day when I was doing this stuff. <laughs> it's like three, four knots that you can gain with a few little tweaks of your control system or your aerodynamics. And they're gonna to need to find about two or three knots at this point. There's no question about it. Emirates Team New Zealand with an 800 plus meter lead on Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli as they head towards the top gate for the second time. Goodness gracious, it's a missile. It just, the creativity going into even doing it. Everybody talks about the design tools and the software, but remember, people make these design tools and software. This is somebody's idea at, at some stage, you know? It, it, it's just an amazing boat. We're talking hundreds of thousands of hours of design and then build hours as well to create, as Sir Ben Ainsley, who is the helmsman of Ineos Team UK, weapons. Totally, you know, it's uh, and this rule's pretty open, you know. When we were in Bermuda last time out in the America's Cup, there was a lot of one design components on the boat. This time out, there's only a couple of those things. You know, the one design component of this boat is that foil arm, that white foil arm that hangs out the side of the boat. Exactly. It's, um, it's one of the only one design parts. The mast is a one design part, but the hull shape, as you can see, is different on all the boats. It's worth explaining what one design is for those that don't understand the argument because it simply means you cannot touch it, you cannot fiddle with it. It, it means written in the rule of these boats, you have to build the boat to this, this compliance. So some of these parts, are you buy them from a one design supply, which means they're identical. Emirates Team New Zealand about to head into the top gate for the second time. Heading towards the right hand mark as you see it on your screen. 
fun. And then they will Happy. head down Happy. on what we would call leg four to complete lap number two. In control, Emirates Team New Zealand. So surely calling you in to tell us, you know, they, they, what, everybody modes their boats for different wind strengths. Maybe this is a moding thing. What's our wind strength out there right now? What do we have? What do you see on the water? Kenny, I mean, it's pretty up and down here. It's a real kind of urban racetrack, I'd say, between 14 and 18, 19 knots. You know, really, really, really puffy. I'm in the, the catamaran that's bringing you the feet. We're in the filming catamaran. I'm hanging on here. The speed is extraordinary. Uh, and just really trying to look at the Kiwi boat for something obvious, but it's like there's real finesse in every area. They fly the boat just the same distance off the water all the time. They're more aero, perhaps, than the other team. You know, everything just looks really slick and very, very polished already. Stay here, stay here. Yeah, yeah. Of course, what a good It's one of the nice. best shots Very you'll away. see on television yeah. looking back at the bow of that magnificent dot. It is a beautiful yeah. boat yeah. as they complete the rounding of the top gate Pressure. for the second time and look yeah. down the downwind and go. But to do, Jimmy Spittle. Really interesting. The bottom time delta was nice. 1 minute 14. The top mark yeah, yeah. time delta was yeah, 1 minute 15. So on that Very upwind, they didn't lose anything. So, you know, I, I guess nice. it's puffy out there. Okay, I have a conspiracy theory. Go for it. You ready? Yeah. They're, they're, they're backing off on Team New Zealand. They don't want to look too far ahead. You, re you reckon they've already begun the sandbags? I, I don't know. Take a look at the relative speeds of the boat. On the left-hand side, that's Emirates Team New Zealand doing around 42 and a half knots. On the right-hand side, 44 knots by Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. 44. I'm sorry, I can't get over it. The difference between the two. You know, it's not like it's not like the Prada boat, Luna Rosa, is doing anything. Honestly, they look really smooth. They haven't had any crashes into the drink. They haven't splash down at all they look polished they look fast i mean obviously it's a it's a it's an amazing boat but something is you know you got the fins you got the wings here's here's a couple big differences well we'll go back to that in a second we'll take a look at that split screen on the on the wing feature again when we get a chance but Speed is not very different, but what we're not really talking about yet is the angles. Maybe maybe these boats go very similar speeds, but maybe New Zealand just are, have the ability to point higher upwind, so therefore they're doing less distance, and maybe they're pointing lower downwind and, and again doing less distance. We'll see it's that a balance in, of the two. Yeah, we'll see that in the race recap. That'll be a telling sign if they just go way fewer distance, right? A lot fewer distance. At some stage, I'm going to get to you on the VMG, the velocity made good when you talk about distance and angles, Nathan. But as we see the speed, look at Emirates Team New Zealand doing close to 47 knots as they approach the bottom gate to complete lap number two. And they are simply flying. You're going to hear that for a lot of time during the next two and a half months in this America's Cup. Flying 75 foot monoholes, and that is the Can't defender of the America's yeah, Cup, and they are putting on a show. Yeah, one of the big differences you can see from those aft cameras is just the deck layout. You know, you, we've been talking about it for weeks since they launched the boat, but have a look there. Right. You can see a couple of helmets, but not, but not much. None of those guys are in the wind. You've got Pete and Blair on the left hand side, Blair at the very front of the boat flying the boat. Over here. And then you've got Peter Burling in the middle with steering from the wheel. Grinders all tucked down out of the breeze and Glenn Ashby's head sitting on the leeward side as the trimmer rolling into attack here. Well, let's watch these guys run around the front of the boat. That's a difference between this boat as well, just how they position themselves. They run around the front of the mast where all the rest of the boats, when they switch side, they, they run behind the boom in the aft section. Here we go. Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli approaching the bottom gate for the second time to complete their second okay, lap of the three in this opening race of three. the America's Cup Two World one, Series. And their lead is around about a kilometre behind Emirates Team New Zealand. But you may be behind, but I've got to say, Kenny, 
It's so pretty to watch. They are beautiful boats. Well, pretty is one thing, fast is another. And, and again, there's really nothing, a lot of, any sailboat race for the most part, when there's a lead like this, something has stood out. There's been a big mistake. The only thing that stands out right now is that this boat is simply way faster than the Italian boat is at this moment. Yeah, but Kenny, they only lost one second once again on that downwind. It was 1.16 at the conspiracy. top. It was 1.17 <laughs> at the bottom. So maybe it, it was a shear. Maybe, it was a maybe, shear. maybe something happened on that first upwind or that first downwind that we couldn't see. But, you know, we've asked Shirley on the water. Shirley, did, was there something obvious on that first lap that we've missed here in the commentary booth? I don't think so, Nathan. I mean, to me, it looked it looks great on the right hand side the whole time. The Kiwis went left and still extended. And even watching them in the in the warm up, you know, the hour before the race start as well, they just whenever they got near a boat, they could pull ahead. They have something extra. If you're one of the challengers right now, what are you thinking? You've got a long way to go. We'll be, you know, it, it it's easy for us right now to start going into the minutia of all the differences of these boats. We got we got three and a half months to dissect all, all the all the nuance through all the boats. Right now, we, we, like all the rest of the sailors in the world, are just sitting back and enjoying all these camera views and angles and, and pictures of boats that we've never seen before. Surely I have to ask you the question from a pure spectator point of view. What's the show like out on the water? New Zealand, Auckland, it's delivering, Stephen. I mean, it's absolutely stunning. I think everyone in New Zealand owns a boat and they have come out for this first day. Loads of boats all the way around this tiny, compact, urban stadium course. It is truly breathtaking. It is a stadium on the water and a stadium off the water as the crowds gather in the America's Cup Village to watch this racing. They know what it's like. They are the defenders, and the defender is flying. But it's only race one of a series that really, in the essence of everything, doesn't matter because the match, the America's Cup, starts March 6, 2021. Long way to go. You know, we, it's really easy for the pundits, for us armchair sailors, to sit back and draw conclusions. But we have a long way to go. And I, all I can say is remember San Francisco. And, and I don't mean that as far as the race numbers against each other. I just remember how fast the development was happening in those boats out in San Francisco, how one boat went from three or four knots slower to three or four knots faster in the course of a day or two just because they tripped over something. So we're going to see, we're going to see plenty of advancement as we go. Cracking shot of the eastern beaches. You can see the beach line of, of uh, suburbs of Mission Bay and Koi Marama in the distance and the boats. We're right on the literal foreshore of, a, of an area called Tamaki Drive. So folks driving back home from work are going to be watching this going, heck, we need to be out on the water. Because this is racing like we have never seen before as Emirates Team New Zealand speeds into the top gate for the last time and heads on their downward leg to the finish of race one in this America's Cup World Series. So, Nathan, everybody talks about the power in these boats, and the power is really split into two. You got all these grinders having at it pretty much the entire race, and from what I know, they're they're taking care of everything above the water line. All the, the sail shapes, the sail trim, the these new twin skin mainsails that all they have all this really, really comprehensive tweaking that can be done. And then you got batteries powering below. Explain out this battery system and the complexity of that and what that's doing yeah you're absolutely right so everything that's controlled below the water is done with a battery so there's a battery on board which is charging an accumulator which powers these foil cans that swing the foils up and down the t foil sitting on the bottom of those cant arms there's flaps on the back of them like a like a flap or a trim tab on the back of an airplane wing. We get a little zoom in here you'll see out, out on the left hand side just out of picture that's what we call the foil wing Foil drops down as you go in, so this is all powered by batteries, these adjustments. Foil comes up on the exit, and on the on the trailing edge, there's a flap. Flap goes down, adds lift, flap comes up, reduces lift. How critical is the timing when you tackle a jibe to get with your forearms up and down? 
timing's everything. You know, basically what they're trying to do when they're doing a manoeuvre like this is transferring the weight or the, the lift on one foil to the other foil as quickly and as smoothly as possible. So all the weight of the boat is currently on that leeward foil. That's the thing that's lifting it in the air. The rudder is keeping the boat in balance. You adjust the rudder angle, more lift drives the nose down, less lift drives the bow back up. As you turn through the manoeuvre, it's all about just transitioning the lift from one foil to another. Luno Russa Prada Pirelli, the challenger of record. Approaching the top gate for the very last time in this race. They've got one more still to come today. Three, two, one. You can hear the voice of Jimmy Spittle as that starboard foil goes down. They get ready to around the, the, the gate. Little delay. That, that, that would, you could see that that, that tack was yeah, not going to be a good one before it even started. Okay. I'd, call that, I'd call that a shocker, Kenny. Okay. okay. Uh, that's what it completely was. stopped. Splash down. Yeah, that's a splash down. It takes a while for them to get going again. That was out of kilter from the second that they, you could hear it in Jimmy's voice and everything was a little out of sequence. So that's really the first big mistake we've seen out of either of these two teams, though. So then, now you have to ask questions. Emirates Team New Zealand, who are flying towards the finish line in this opening race of the America's Cup World Series, this win, what does it mean to the other teams? <laughs> Nothing. If you're the other team, you're just saying, we knew we had a long way to go. We knew these guys were quick out of the box. There's all kinds of, you know, they, they were the ones that created the rule, right, Nathan? I mean, they, they, were, they were the major part of creating the rule. They might have, the defenders always work a little bit of help, a little bit of edge into the action. Just ask the New York Yacht Club. They had it for a hundred and something years. Emirates Team New Zealand coming to the finish at the end of race one of the America's Cup World Series, and they do it in style against Luno Rosa, Prada Pirelli, and the fans just love it. And those are young sailors wanting to be out on that boat. Tereho Tai. A quick explanation of Tereho Tai, you could say, is an extension of the ocean. And it's part of the ocean today, but early days. Early days. Early, early days. But uh, there's nothing not to like if you're a Kiwi fan right now. I can tell you that. Nathan, you've got to say there must be a, an inward smile of satisfaction from Peter Burling and that crew. Well, this team and this crew's been waiting to line up against the competition since the event finished in Bermuda. And, uh, man, didn't they throw it down? They said, all right, you know, you want to come and take this cup of us? Good luck. We're going to go and beat you by as far as we can. So as much as this result means nothing in the greatest scheme of things, surely it could be considered a statement. Oh, there's, there's no question about it. Uh, Listen, win winning is winning uh, for all these the, all these guys. They, 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 they are all literally the most competitive sailors in the world. So wins win. But you're not going to see a lot of smiles out of the Kiwis. They, they, they realize how hard a work you know, they're, they're going to have to work over these next months to keep this edge or even have an edge at all when it comes down to it. So I'm not trying to throw cold water on this. I'm just trying to say early days, early, early days. We have talked so much about the, the comparison to Formula One because it's all about aero, all about updates. And we heard Blair earlier on in our broadcasting about the need to keep adding, keep adding, keep adding. And you look at a race like this, and, and let's put it singularly, gee whiz, what can they add to make it go even faster? Well, Nathan, how, you know, back in Bermuda, how, how many how many gadgets they still got in the closet that, that they haven't even broken out yet? That's the big thing. You know, all these teams, they, they could be using old foils, they could be using old sails, they could be, you know, who knows, right? Nobody knows. Well, my, my inside information tells me that some of these teams aren't even on their final set of foils yet. So a lot of these teams have got new foils coming and uh, they're far from maximum speed right now. Worth asking, how many foils has each team allowed in total before the Prada Cup and the America's Cup have there to make it there, these challenges? So the total number of foils is six foils. So you see the, the T-wing out on the far side. So you can basically build three for the port side, three for the starboard side. So they're allowed to build six in total. And they don't have to be symmetric. You can, you don't, ha there's no reason they could be a matched pair either. For all we know, they have unmatched pairs of foils on, on the boat to see, to try to get a gauge from one tack or one jibe versus the other. 
Luna Rossa, Prada Probably Pirelli, the challenger place. of record. Yep. Finally by. coming to the finish line in the opening race of this Prada America's Cup jump. World Series race number one against the defender in Emirates Team New Zealand. And they will finally cross the line and start talking. It's only race one, but gee, the Kiwis were quick. American Magic, Ineos Team UK. This is the race committee. Just letting you know we intend to start on time at 15.50. Over. There are Italian fans at the Viaduct in the race committee of the Medios Team UK. America's Cup Race Village. They'll be happy. They've seen racing and racing that sailors have never really seen before up close. And this is this is pretty exciting, to say the least. Well, real sailboat race, boats ripping around the racetrack, tons of people out on the water cheering on the hometown team. Doesn't get much better than this. A three minute and 13 second win to Emirates Team New Zealand over Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli. That says plenty. That's a whipping. So here we go off the starting line and you know, Jimmy Spithill tried to push them back, but but the time and distance from Emirates Team New Zealand was just about perfect. So Jimmy didn't have a, a, a choice, really. He had to tack away and keep clear air and work up the right side of the race course. And this is where Shirley Robertson thought the right side of the race course was actually favored. But out of the left comes scorching Emirates Team New Zealand. And I mean, this game was over right here in the start, Nathan. It was uh, first first leg was the ball game. Exactly. Like after their first jibe, they're already over 700 metres in front there. So they've clearly got some wheels. They're clearly going very fast. And, you know, on the second beat here, they they just sound smooth. You know, the boat looks fast. You never see them looking back at their competitor. They're just out there going through the motions just right now, trying to show the New Zealand public what this boat can do. Yeah, I, I, I think this is such a big deal for Emirates Team New Zealand. and. The Kiwis with all the drama that the world has gone through this past year and and really expecting a ton of people to come into the to come into these islands and enjoy New Zealand. There's a lot of Kiwis around here that are just looking at this as finally we got a sailboat race. Even the sailors themselves, they finally got a sailboat race. They were supposed to sail multiple events in the in the uh, America's Cup World Series this past year. This is it. This is the only racing. You know, Nathan, this is, talk about rust. A lot of these sailors haven't actually raced a race in a year plus, which is shocking to me. Peter Burling helming Tierrejo tied to an opening win in the America's Cup World Series. The margin was three minutes and 13 seconds. Peter Burling, how satisfying was that? Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, like you said on the broadcast just before, a pretty amazing day to be out here and actually racing. And, you know, for nearly all of us, it's been, you know, a long time since we raced. For, you know, for myself personally, it's, it's been since February. So uh, it's just amazing to get out here and actually line up with another boat and get to go around the racetrack um, with something up for grabs. <coughs> and I think it's been incredible, you know, seeing how many Kiwis have come out as well. You know, like when we uh, pictured this race course, uh, all those years ago and you know what it could look like with all the boats around it's you know just amazing to see it actually uh, as a reality peter just give us all a, a, a bit of a idea of what it's like to actually sail a boat like this because some of these pictures that we're seeing honestly nobody's ever seen pictures like this before nobody's ever seen a boat like this before just give us a quick feel for what it's actually like physically and mentally to sail the boat yeah, well, it's uh, something that I think we're very fortunate. We've been sailing quite a bit over the last year or so, so we're getting slightly more used to it now. But <clears throat> no, it's, it's just incredible, the speed, you know, and I think to add to that, how quickly they can manoeuvre, um, you know, it's pretty good action there at the pre-start with Luna Rossa. We really enjoyed that. And then, you know, got that little shift, so it was kind of a, a, an easier race for us. Um, but, you know, we really... Um, yeah, enjoy sailing these boats, I suppose. You know, it takes a lot of people doing the, the right things and coordination uh, to make it all work well, and uh, we're really pleased with how we went. Hey, Pete, it's Nathan Outridge here, mate. Uh, congrats on the win. I think the question on everyone's mind right now is, why are you guys so much faster than them?
Just not exactly the same piece of water, but you know, we got a pretty nice lift shift out, um, you know, off the left hand side of the racetrack, and then a pretty good right one to kind of get out to a pretty healthy margin on that first beat. And then, um, you know, from there, we on our boat, we're just uh, sailing around trying to connect the dots. Thanks for your time, Peter. Appreciate it. Congratulations. See you about it. back out on the water a little later. Thanks, mate. Talk soon. Gotta love it. Thumbs up says a lot. Look, isn't that a beautiful shot? Arangitoto, one of Auckland's most iconic landmarks. It rises 260 metres above the Haurahi Gulf. Believe it or not, that's the youngest volcano of some 50 uh, hanging around in this Auckland region. Time to go on to Luna Rosa, Prada Pirelli. See what uh, Jimmy Spittle makes of that. Hey, Jimmy, uh, three minutes and 13 behind. What do you make of that race? Yeah, look, Team New Zealand did a great job there. Not too many mistakes. Uh, unfortunately, we lost our starting software during the start. Uh, lost all the numbers, but to be quite honest, they were just much sharper uh, turning the corners. So uh, full credit to them. Hey, Jimmy, uh, wind shift, boat speed, combination of both. What, what do you chalk it up to? Yeah, I think once they got clear, they were just able to really sail their own race. Um, but I'd have to say for the small amount I saw, they, uh, to me, was just getting around the corners much better than we were. Interesting. Uh, Jimmy, Nathan Arridge here. It looks like it's pretty shifty at the top of that course. We saw you guys trying to get the ley line, miss the ley line a couple of times there. Um, what is the race course really like out there for us watching from home? OK, we seem to be having just a few communication problems with uh, Jimmy Spittle on Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. Uh, one down, New Zealand get the point. Here's the key moment. Key moments, easy. First beat. There is really no real key. I, I would love to have chalked this up to something that Luna Rosa just simply did wrong or that Emirates Team New Zealand simply did right. What Emirates Team New Zealand did was design a really fast boat, in my view. Uh, there's it, clearly there's it's shifty out there, but not this shifty and these guys just showed their heels to Luna Rosa on that first beat a 700 uh, Meter lead at the weather mark. That's pretty unheard of and again That's without Luna Rosa making a very clear error out there. And so I I, I just I'm very impressed by uh, by the, the whole package that Team New Zealand has put together at this uh, young date in the overall event. race one now to race two american magic are back in the game well new york yacht club's american magic is a collaboration between high-powered private backing and the new york yacht club certainly giving them all the makings of a power squad terry hutchinson's got the reins and immediately tapped his old friend in 2007 after guard partner dean barker to drive patriot barker has plenty of experience in the pressure seat driving either a challenger or a defender in six of the last seven cup cycles. And it's the old rivals of Britannia, the British challenge, Rita, the name of Sir Ben Ainsley's Olympic yachts, emblazoned on the side of that magnificent hull. Here is the British challenge. Ineos Team UK is a new team led by, led and backed by Ineos founder and chairman Sir Jim Ratcliffe. Sir Ben Ainsley, a previous America's Cup winner and the most successful Olympic sailor of all time, is the principal and skipper and he's back for another attempt to win this elusive trophy. It goes without saying that this team is in good hands. Ben has his focus on something even bigger now. And the start is underway. Enios Team UK, American Magic, and they are good to go across the line in race two of the America's Cup World Series. Timing a little off between, you know, we're practicing two here in, in television world. Uh, these guys are off, 
And it looked like a pretty even start. And Patriot kind of sneaks out to a little bit of a weather advantage. Nathan, the edge of this race course comes up really fast. Yeah, you're hitting this boundary within 30, 40 seconds of the gun. And uh, that lured position is a tricky one to, to be in. You, you're instantly getting pinned against the boundary there. And American Magic, he's setting up for attack right on the boundary. That was the voice of Richard Slater, who's the chief umpire. So through that starting sequence, there must have been a couple penalties. And maybe at some stage here, we can bring in Richard and he can let us know uh, what those penalties were and what they were for. Penalty still on here, Ben. Yeah, I can see that. Copy. Say again, umpire. Clear. Clear. OK, coming on the bridge. So confirmation that the penalty received in the Pre-start by Britannia has been cleared and it's a clean racing. Surely furious start. Well, until about two minutes to that start, Stephen, Ineos Team UK was not going to take part in the race. They have a problem with their foil control system, but just managed to sort it out enough to, to cross the line and get going. I don't know what kind of shape they're in, if it's fixed and ready to go, but um, they're getting around the course. So let's just confirm what that penalty was. Let's go to Chief Umpire Richard Slater. It's in the new part of taking you places you've never been before. Richard, what was the penalty on Ineos? Uh, we actually had two penalties. We had uh, Ineos was outside the boundary uh, when, we, they was, when we were racing, as in two minutes before the start. And the second penalty was you were meant to, they're meant to come in from above the line and cross the start line, and they failed to do so. So we ended up with two penalties. Thank you, mate. Australian gold or canary yellow, those T-shirts? Australian gold, my friend. Thank you, bud. <laughs> we do look forward to talking to you throughout this 36th America's Cup. Thanks, bud. No worries. See you. More likely now. More likely doing it. It's getting live, but then rebuilding. Open track. Looks like uh, the Americans here have a very comfortable lead on the first beat and are in control of this race. They're, they're effectively dead upwind of them here, sending the, the dirty air that's coming off the sails or off them, slowing them down and, and, and in full control at this point in time. My wheel. Almost a 300 metre lead of American Magic on NES Team UK. As, as you heard from Shirley, our eyes on the water that a foil can't have issue prior to the start, but they have got that sword. And there you can see Dean Barker on his home waters. How crazy is that? On his home waters in an American boat as he goes behind the mainsail. Yeah, behind the mainsail. We saw Peter Burling go in front of the mast during all of his manoeuvres. Everybody's got a different way of doing it. And listen, not, none of them are right or wrong at this stage. It's just a little bit of different how, how they figure it out. You know, it's going to be a tough one here, Nathan, to figure out if this is a inherent speed issue from Ineos, uh, a wind shift issue, or if this is a real mechanical issue. And that's the reason why they're so far behind right now. Well, it's one thing to really, you know, prepare yourself for a practice race, but when you've got systems on your boat not working properly, we heard that might not have even been able to start that race to get your head back into the game and race again. I've been there before, it's, it's tough. And for all we know, that boat might not be even functioning correctly as, as it is right now. Right. Okay. Happy. On board, Ineos Team UK, the British challenge looking and hoping to be those first ones to win the America's Cup. American Magic approaching the top gate for the first time. You heard Dean Barker just say, I'll stay here, Goody. He didn't even switch sides, so he's driving around this mark from the lured side of the race boat. Here we go. It is like driving a car when you watch these Helmsen do what they do with these 75 foot, six and a half ton yachts, isn't it? G forces of high 40s, you know, in, in knots going around those marks. Just got to be something special for these guys to get used to. 35 to did, you, did you see that wheel shaking in his hand as he <laughs> as he went around? That's that that 30. shows you uh, oh, how on edge yeah. these boats are. Yeah, good Ineos, Team UK, held by Sir Ben Ainsley, one of the most decorated yeah. Olympic sailors your pitch. at the helm. He's also the 
the boss basically of wheel, this campaign, and they are desperate to try and back on bring the Bearing cup away. back home. Remember, go 1851, Isle of Wight, Great Britain one. against America. This Easy. is yeah. this is a classic. This is a classic yacht race, but they are trailing. They get around the top gate comfortably and get on the downward leg. Remember, three laps, three times up and down the course. One thing that's very noticeable is they're flying higher and lower, kind of a little bit, much more pitchy fore and aft. Their, their ride height just doesn't seem to be what the other boats are at this stage. No, it definitely doesn't look as stable. And one thing we've noticed is they often leave that windward foil down longer on the exit of maneuvers. See, they're a little touched down. And the, the reason why they're probably leaving that foil down longer is just to keep the stability in the platform. When both boards are in the water, it makes the boat wider. You kind of use it for stability. And when you're comfortable that you've got the power back in the boat, you can lift the foil up again. But surely, from on the water, is it still very puffy out there? It looks like the top of that course is extremely tricky. It's a great course, Nathan, isn't it? It's, everything is going on. I mean, this is a real proving ground for any sailor. It's a fantastic course. You have loads of puffs and holes, but, you know, a, a great breeze. And when they get in a puff, the acceleration is unbelievable. Uh, I'm like hanging on on the boat here. We're right beside the Americans now, and actually they look they look pretty good. And I know they're confident in the breeze. You know, they, they, especially in the lighter conditions, but in the breeze they are they are happy and they're sailing like that right now. See the radical turn by Ineos at the bottom of the screen right there through that jibe. That means it was unstable and they're just making sure they have plenty of apparent wind coming out of the jibe so they don't splash down because what we have seen through these practice sessions is the fact that when you splash down, it takes a long time to get back up again. This isn't the bottom mark, this is the start mark, isn't it? Yes, correct. correct. That would see how we, if we get below this. I don't think we do. That would be an easy one to do out here at these speeds, Nathan, wouldn't it? To, to mistake the starting gate for the lured gate. So the starting gate is about uh, two, two, three tenths of a mile. Uh, we have a problem on board Ineos, by the way. So trouble for Ineos Team UK on the downward leg. Some sort of foil problem, no question about it. This is what they warned us before the race started that may happen, and it has happened. They have. They have either a hydraulic or a mechanical uh, foil issue, no question about it. Yeah, I think Shirley picked that up an earlier. Shirley, it was something to do with the foil cant system, wasn't it? Yeah, we had a message with just minutes to go to the start that they wouldn't be starting, that they had a problem with the, the foil cant system. And that was that was all we heard. And then about a minute 30 to go, they were, they were like, right, we're joining in. But, you know, on these kind of boats, Nathan, you know, it doesn't really roll like that, is it? You can't just attach a shackle and off you go. It's, it's complex, both mechanically, hydraulically, and also, you know, software as well. It's, it's a whole hybrid of very clever state-of-the-art engineering. And uh, for sure, I think it was a, a tough ask to be able to, to pull the pin and start that race. Hatred has rounded the bottom gate and will start the second lap. So they have completed one lap of three. Okay, here's a replay. Oh boy, here's the problem. Something mechanical. Right, completely locked out here. So the rudder just sort of lost grip in the middle of that. Hang on. Hang on. I will. Rudder grip. Ken, I think you saw it in the, the overhead jive initially. I could see a lot of white water coming off the rudder. I think what Ben Ainsley was saying there is I just completely lost grip. You know, if you get too high in the middle of these jives, you can get very little rudder in the water. When you've got very little rudder in the water, it's very easy for air to start sucking down the foil and you actually lose complete steerage. And it looked like to me there they got through the jive that lifted the foil, but it still hadn't gripped yet. With only one rudder in the water, these boats are really difficult to sail. You know, when we were foiling in Bermuda on the catamarans, at least you had one rudder in the water at all times. Whereas a little bit of heel, and it can take your rudder out of the water, so not an easy boat to sail. So why do you think, sorry, why do you think they just stopped for a minute? Well, I think when you lose 
your steerage, the boat has, is so big, it's so heavy, that it then started to lay over, it started to broach, they can't let the sails out enough, and they literally had to wait for the boat to turn head to wind. You see them drop both foils down, put them down like a keel, stop the boat tipping over, and then you have to start all over again, foil up, rebuild, and get back into the race. Have we seen the perfect example of how these are being raced on the edge? Oh, we, I think inherently the, the definition of these boats is racing on the edge. There's no question about that. It, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that grip, like Nathan said, at least there were multiple rudders in the water uh, on the catamarans of past America's Cups. Here they got one, and it's a skinny one, boy. It is tiny. And it's tiny because it's drag. You know, the only reason to have the rudder is to steer the boat, and the faster you go, really nice the belt. less rudder you need. But every now and then, if you don't have much of it in the water, it is quite tough. But let's not forget that they probably have some form of issue going on that boat still. They're incredibly complicated boats, and if you've got an issue and you're trying to race around it, it's, it's frustrating. Yeah. Ineos Team UK finally completing lap number one as they Go into the bottom gate for the first time. After a splashdown, a little mechanical issue, a little rudder issue, but they are back and flying, and that will be the most encouraging thing. Here we go. Right about 30 seconds to go. So we're towing and right. So we have just been informed that it was a steering cable issue. There we go. That'll do it. Uh, from uh, any boat on any boat on the uh, in the world, you don't have to be going 45 knots to have a steering cable issue and have it ruin hey, your day. Get up the top left, make that leg short. So, Ken, we obviously have no idea how any of these boats function inside, but to have a steering cable issue, in my experience, it must have jumped a sheave or something like that to get it back together. So, maybe they're able to quickly repair that and get back on with it. But yeah, if you have a steering cable issue. Would you keep racing? Would you keep sailing? Uh, could be a la it could be something as simple as a lashing. You know, the, you tension the cable typically separately, so it could be something just as simple as that. You never know. I, you know, I, I lost a mast in the around the world race on a $22 fitting. You know, so you just never know. It's the simplest things in the world. Who didn't touch something? Yeah. Well. And remember, this is the first race day, technically, that these guys have had. So they'll ha all have complete protocols as to how their day works from the minute they get out of bed to the minute they go to bed. So, you know, they're all working on that, too. This, Yes, this is the America's Cup World Series, but this is also practice for all of these boats. That was a nice looking tack by American Magic, you know, gliding through, transferring the load from one floor to the other. and. Uh, Super smooth. It's starting to look even windier out there now. You can see a lot of white caps developing, particularly on the right hand side of the race course. So, Shirley, is that a current yeah. issue out there right now, or is it actually wind strength coming up? We can, we will, but. Uh... Well, Kenny, it could be a bit of both. Uh, it's low tide right now, and the tide changes first at yeah. North Head on the right hand side of the course. So we could get a bit of a current pushing them, pushing them up, creating a bit yep, more waves. No We're right left. behind the Americans now, just sort of massive lull, massive no holes in the breeze here. Looks like here. a big right Three, shift out there as well. Two, one, down, American down. Magic rounding the top gate for the second time. They take their left-hand marker. It's a nice and tidy, although a lot of splash coming off that foil. And I, I've got to ask you about this, as you know, this is one of your favorite things to talk about, the aero. Splash off the falls. Lots of splash, no dash. Yeah, too much spray, too much falling wood, too much drag. To me, it looked like it was lighter, Shirley said, as they approached, as they were bearing away, pressure increase, too much lured heel, foil goes in the water, spray goes everywhere. It's not the end of the world, just a little bit more drag, and instead of accelerating out of that bear away, they have a little bit too much heel. So everyone out there is always trying to do better, and for sure they'll look back at that bear and say, you know, if we had to just ease the sails a little bit more, but would have accelerated nicely, but... A bit like a, a momentary slip off the foot on the accelerator. Yeah, at least they didn't fall onto the brake or the clutch when they came off the accelerator. A little bit of holding on for dear life, and no harm, no foul. Here we go. Dean Barker standing at the back of the main selling, crossing over on the port side of Patriot. <laughs> I was standing there for a moment saying, oh, just checking things out, we're okay. 
Well, what he was actually doing was he was checking Ineos, who was sailing up wind. You know, he was holding onto those handles on the end of the boom. Remember, the guys who were driving on the windward side of the boat, in that case, it was Paul Goodison driving on the exit of the manoeuvre. He can't see what's happening to Lewis. You know, they're all about aerodynamics. They're all about trying to get low. So Dean just wanted to stay there for a bit, let him know that Ineos hadn't tacked. There's not going to be a problem, and then they do the handover. That lighthouse is actually in the race course right now. I'm guessing that would be a very bad place to go. That's Bean Rock. Uh, okay, the Bean, Bean Rock, Rock lighthouse. lighthouse. One of the only remaining examples of a you know, of a cottage-style lighthouse built in 1870. That, thank God you're here. Thank God. Oh, I can tell you one thing, guys. You would not want to be hitting that rock. No. I bet you there's plenty of sailors in Auckland who have accidentally touched that before, but hitting it at 40 knots, not going to end well, is it? That big sound is the hydraulics moving, right? It, it sounds like they have a cow stashed on board or something. It, 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 this is the hydraulic systems pumping oil and moving those massive wings around. But you're right, look at how that, that wheel is literally vibrating in his hand, isn't it? Yeah, I agree, it's 191. Yeah, it's moving around a lot there. One thing I've noticed, you know, with the, the great shots we have on board from the stern can, you can see the, the traveler, the boom, it's connected to the traveler, which slides, you know, across the boat. You can see it just moving in small increments. They're playing that a lot on this boat. They're, they're, they're going up and down, trimming that traveler. But I don't see much main sail trim. I'm not seeing the, the sail get let on and off. It's just barn dooring, as we call it, as opposed to adjusting the twist. Big light air area that they're sailing through. When you see that kind of shiny water, that's that just means that there's not a puff. See the dark spots in the upper right-hand corner, especially up. Whoops. Up there, I got to get quicker at this thing. Uh, the dark spots are where you want to be, and sometimes in these narrow race courses, you just absolutely can't get there you, you, because you'd be out of bounds. Setting up the left gate again. Standing by, Three, two, one. Enios Team UK rounding the top mark. And well behind American Magic. Not having a great day today, though. You can hear the frustration in Ben's voice. American Magic now rounding the bottom gate for the second time to start the final lap of three. Three times up and down. Six legs of this race course, this stadium course. It faces back towards Auckland City. Spectators in the Viaduct and the America's Cup Village and higher top Momoika North Head. Just a beautiful day to watch sailboat racing of a different sort, different era, new class, AC 75s. We're going to try to go back, Stephen, and take a look at that, that last mark rounding by Ineos again. It looked like they lost it again, uh, Nathan. It, it looked like they might have had that same problem. And, and I just want to reiterate, we knew that they had a mechanical issue before they started this race. And all of this could be stemmed around that, that problem. We don't, we don't know. And by the way, we'll never know because they're not going to tell us. You never know what they're going to tell us, can do you? But <laughs> not much. Ask Shirley. She has to talk to these guys all the time. A frustrated Ben Ainsley is my guess. 20 seconds here. Copy. That's 20 seconds to another jive. Let's see if we can follow this through the whole jive and see what's going on on board and what kind of frustrations they're dealing with. Okay, stand by. Yeah, yours. Two, Ready. one board down. Turn it. Light on next to you. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Okay. Get there. My wheel. Okay. Hold that for the Yeah. Thirties. That looked pretty good to me. I mean, there wasn't wasn't much in that. Yep. Staying light here. What it what it does show is that there's a lot of people involved in making these boats maneuver correctly. You know, you had 
Yep. Lennon Mun there running around the back of the main okay. before that jibe, so he's in the right position to trim the main on the exit. You had Giles Scott sitting to lured throughout that turn, driving on the exit while Ben Ainsley crosses that the boat. Meanwhile, you have now. Luke okay. Parkinson and Lee McMillan right, like flying this. the boat. It's, it's a big team like effort, these boats, that's yeah, for sure. But as you said, that maneuver looked just fine from on board. Yeah. It, it looks timid. It looks like they're still learning, though. I have to admit, like it, you know, the Kiwis just and, and Luna Rosa and in fact the Americans are just kind of throwing it. You know, they're just throwing it and letting it go, and and they look a little more. Uh, I don't know what the word is. Maybe on edge going in. Well, I guess when you do two massive wipeouts for some reason. You, you lose know. your confidence very quickly, <laughs> don't you? you know, Fair like, enough. Your, your point's really valid. Three teams are looking pretty slick and smooth and have confidence in their boat, but when your boat fucks you around a bit, yeah. you lose confidence in the equipment you're using, so then you are a bit more timid. You know, we've, I've been there several times in training sessions and races where you, you're either on the money and the boat's doing exactly what it wants for you, and then every now and then, it does something a bit random and odd, and so you, you have to throttle back, and the last thing you can do on a boat like this is throttle back. We'll shine one and then left again. You mean hitting the water, going 40 knots, randomly? Gives, yeah, that's... Gives you, freaks that, you out a little bit? That's not Gee. much fun at all. <laughs> hey, Shirley, we'll cross to you on the water. How, how slick does the American Magic boat look there, and what can you see? You know, your eyes on the water. Give us, give us some insight. I'm not sure about insight, Nathan, but we're, we're glued to them. We're right beside them. It's interesting what you say. I mean, it might be slightly untidy at the corners and maneuvering, but in a straight line, they look really, really quite fast. They're sailing it aggressively. It's, it's peeled over to windward. There's only a couple of centimeters between the bottom of the hull and the water, which is exactly what you want. You're trying to close that gap to, to increase the end placing effect. I mean, and the bow down, which we want as well, you know, less rudder in the water. I mean, they look fast and they look solid. I know they're not racing really anyone at the moment, but in a straight line, I think they're good. I think this is a drone shot of Ineos rounding that lured gate. Something patch in three. 10 seconds to attack. Their speeds aren't crazy slow. Uh, you know, it, it, it's... Downwind, they were pushing 42 yep. knots. Two, two, yeah. Down. Yeah. Hey. Watch this maneuver and see if we can see a hint of any problem. My wheel, my rope. Yours. Uh, it looks kind of like a tack to me, right? Not, not, much, not much in it. American Magic approaching the top gate for the last time. Then they will head downwind to the finish. They are in complete control of the second race of the America's Cup World Series. Patriot doing the job on Britannia at the moment. Oh, goodness gracious. That was, that was the G-Force, and you could see the puff. They just entered a puff just smoking around that mark. You get numb to it, right, Nathan? You just It's just another day on the water. You do if you do enough days of it, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. But if it's still a bit brand new to you, it stands the hairs up yep. on the back of your neck every time you get to that top mark. Yep. Interesting to note that uh, Shirley Robinson, our eyes on the water, talking about how quick American magic looks. Remember, uh, as we were fortunate enough to see them race Emirates Team New Zealand in one of the earlier practice races before this America's Cup World Series. They were behind three, four seconds. And it, and it was one jive but the bottom mark that uh, sorted them out, and they won by 10 seconds. What does that tell us? Does that give us any indication as to where they're at? Yeah, no question at all that they're fast. You know, we know they're going quick through the water. And from what we've seen in this race, their maneuvers are slick as well. I think what it really is telling us is that you know, later on today, we're going to see these guys come up against Sorry, another team and we're sure going to really team. see where they fit against Luna Rossa and Team New Zealand. But everything that we're seeing right now, they're, they're ripping out there and uh, it's, it's going to be a real boat race coming up. A race four will be American Magic versus Emirates Team New Zealand. The question we have to it's ask, though, with the, the what, what, what has gone on with Enios Team UK, the they are supposed to back up for race number three. Well, we'll find out. We're, that, that's exactly, that's a very good point. We're going to find out how uh, mechanically or physically, uh, you know, what, what kind of shape they're in as soon as we finish. 
um, just by the fact of whether they come back out on the race course or not. I would love to know why the grinders on Ineos Team UK are sideways and not pointing towards the bow of the boat as they, the, the two boats cross. Not just sideways, but Nathan, it looked like they were in the gym. They had the, they had like the, the local Sky Sports on their little screen in front of them and they were just kind of sitting there working away in the gym. I bet you they're not watching any other sporting competition right now. They'll be looking at numbers, hydraulic pressures, you know. The other thing you can see is that, you know, those guys have individual grinding pedestals, whereas all the other teams who face four and a half, they're sharing, you know. So you have a teammate, you're working with your grinding side by side, but you've only got four sets of handles on board. So you might be putting double the amount of power through that shaft to power that hydraulic function. Whereas Ineos Team UK could be separating the way that they, the right you know, power turn. the systems. There's a lot of complicated systems on board these boats, and the grinders okay, are the first, ones driving the whole thing. <laughs> Feel like we may struggle to make it a, you know, So, like Shirley Robertson on out. the water, what do you make of this so far, particularly the pace oh, of the American so Magic? Yeah. Well, Stephen, it's hard to keep up in the camera boat. <laughs> They're definitely quick. Um, I mean, just to add to that grinding conversation, I know for the British, they wanted to free up Giles Scott, the tactician, so he didn't have to grind. So a massive emphasis on making that really, really efficient. I think that, that was you know, definitely the thinking behind that. We're right beside the Americans, and as I said before, in a straight line, they, they look hot. You know? uh, they got a way to go turning the corners, but uh, they're sailing well in the breeze, definitely. To use your words, uh, Shirley, today American Magic have won the street fight against Enios Team UK in a classic okay, battle yeah, of the two, original three, contenders one, for the America's Cup. American Magic crossing the line in race two of the America's Cup World Series, and it's a strong performance from Patriot. Very, very strong performance again. Kind of like we saw in the first race, recently flawless. It wasn't, I mean, I'm sure these guys are going to get into the room tonight and their coaching staff and all their numbers and they're going to pick up this thing apart. And for all we know, they're going to think we sailed terribly. But from the outside looking in, these guys look like a pretty slick effort right now. And just like that, it settles down. It settles and uh, nestles and they start the breathing water. again. <laughs> exactly. We I lived. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> and the grinders are just saying, get the chase boat over here with a few drinks so we can rehydrate it and cool ourselves down. I remember those days. It was a fantastic feeling when you crossed the finishing line, particularly after a, a nice win like this where you can breathe a sigh of relief. We've got a monkey off the back. We've got the first win on the board. And... Uh, you shift focus now to what you need to do in the up and coming race. Did I hear you say you were a grinder? I was never a grinder. No, you don't have the physical prowess to be a grinder. I used one wow. once in the gym. I tried once in the gym to grind. I think he just insulted you. I, I'm just going to say. No, 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 not at all. Not insulting my fellow commentator at all. We were able to do 10 press ups before the start of the day. You, you guys took it on. Took it on. 10, ten push ups. Nice well, job. I did 20. I hadn't told him I'd done 10 before as we look at. Enios Team UK, who are still making their way around this course, they are well behind American Magic, who have completed the second race. But there would be, look, you know, despite what's going on here, Kenny, you've got to say, this is still encouraging signs. They have bounced back, regardless of the, the distance. You know, as we say in the old adage of the America's Cup, there is no second, but they are still sailing, and this, this is certainly... You can take positives out of this, bouncing back. We have, yes. You're right. We have no idea where they are on their learning curve, on their path curve. For all we know, again, that they have big breakthroughs sitting in the closet that, that haven't come out yet or still being constructed. Um, we're just not going to know for a while. This is a great first step, especially for Patriot. Uh, but you know these guys these guys have have had their issues no question well documented in the practice racing and uh, you know let's take little victories got around the race course let's figure out why we had a couple bad jibes um, and this mecha mechanical problem for all we know it's a real you know it's a big one and they're and they're actually doing a miraculous job to get around the race course 
Yeah, you know, it's one thing interesting I heard Shirley saying earlier, you know, how Giles is a tactician. They wanted to free him up to be able to give more input. But I'm a, I'm a little unsure about that because he's he's on the leeward hull the whole time. As a tactician, it's really difficult. On the leeward side of the boat, it's really hard to be calling the breeze and, and assisting. Obviously, you need someone to leeward with eyes out of the boat helping there. But the one thing that I haven't heard much coming off this boat, and I know we're talking over them constantly, is... You know, who's calling the wind? Who's really helping Ben drive this boat accurately? And I might just close my mouth briefly here and listen coming to the finishing line. It's technically a really quiet boat, especially when you're laying out trying to listen to them. That's when they get the quietest, Nathan. You're gonna you're gonna find that us uh, us, us veterans yeah, in the booth will, will let you know. That's that's when they go quiet is when you're trying to listen. And then when you want to say something, they start talking. Of course, yeah. It's because we can hear you while we're racing too. <laughs> exactly. Yes, we do have. Another beautiful day here in Auckland. And uh, coming up to the finish line, Ineos Team UK. Here is the America's Cup Village. Bathing in sunshine. I hope they've all slipped, slopped and slapped, as we say here. Smiles abound around this America's Cup Village because finally we have racing of these magnificent, they are magnificent, AC75 foiling mono holes. Who would have thought? Well, they did think. Challenger of record. Okay, and also defender and Emirates Team up. New Zealand as okay, Ben Ainsley one. and Ineos Team UK finally side. make it to the finish in race two of this America's Cup World Series. They had a, a gear issue with their rudder early on in the piece, but they have mounted the challenge again and are back. Okay. And in this, this game, you've got to get up and you've got to come back. And they finish well behind Patriot of the New York Yacht Club. Confirmation then of race number two on this Thursday, the 17th of December. They're calling a DNF on NES Team UK, but a clear win and a point to American Magic. A point to American Magic. Remember, after three days of racing, they'll all be seated. You get a point for a win. And that's the key here. Well, here we came into the start. We actually caught up with this start a little bit late from a television perspective, but it was a pretty darn even start. But you saw a speed difference right off the line. A little higher, a little faster by the New York Yacht Club boat. And sure enough, up leg one, there was a, quite a, quite a spread happening in a very short period of time. Again, we, we just we don't want to keep repeating ourselves, but we will. We know that Ineos, Team UK, had a mechanical problem before the race, and we're very lucky, lucky to even make the race start. So good for them for not using it as an excuse and getting out there and practicing around the racetrack. But wow, these guys had pace, and they were smooth, and the G-forces, it looked like a Formula One car, Nathan, going around those corners. Yeah, I've sailed high-performance boats a lot of my time, and I'm sorry, I'm just looking at the, the, the jibe here that ended up in disaster with the rudder fully letting go. It's, it's, it's never fun getting a full wash down like that, and... Uh, they're trying to keep the boat upright. They're, you know? they're trying to stop it going so over. The thing is, is these boats have stability and balance at speed, but as soon as you slow down, the foils have some weight in them to stop them tipping over, but they're incredibly hard to get upright and to build speed from this. You see the foil now arm lifts up and it's a long build from there. Coming into the finish line, it was American Magic with an easy win. Um, listen, they're going to be really happy with this, but these are, these are veterans, these are pros. These guys have been doing this for a long time and they'll be back to the drawing board tonight and trying to improve off of what we considered was actually a great performance just reconfirming that result. American Magic gets the number and it's a flat five minute win over Enios Team UK. Five minutes over Enios Team UK. The battle is well and truly on. And if you look for a war horse in this campaign, 
It's Emirates Team New Zealand. This is their 10th consecutive campaign. They've been in the game for 35 years. And the lessons have been hard earned and hard learned. New Zealand first got involved in the mid 80s really with Sir Michael Fay. It was a whole new thing really. We all knew about the America's Cup from watching Australia 2 on TV and that was a, an obvious progression of, of something that we all wanted to do. So we all leapt on board as soon as there was an opportunity to. KZ7 ended up having a fantastic run and nearly pulled off the impossible and sparked people's imagination back here and, and started the 35 year plus involvement in the America's Cup. 12 years ago, the call went out to stay Stand Up Australia. Now in 1995, it's Stand Up New Zealand. International sports oldest prize leaves the United States. This time to a different down under, New Zealand. Coming into 2000, Team New Zealand at that point really picked up on what they knew as a winning combination or a winning formula in 95 and expanded on that. Absolutely magnificent. Got stronger again in design, got stronger again with the sailing team, and it was a slick act, it was just hard to beat. Team New Zealand complete the first successful defence of the America's Cup outside America. You know, after 2000, there was obviously a big loss of key people from Team New Zealand at that time who went off to, you know, form the Alinghi team and they went to Oracle, they went everywhere. So it was basically, what was left was a very young team. The main boom, that new innovation that was seen there has broken. And all of a sudden we had a boat out there that was filling up with water, masts falling down, you know, it was a step too far. It's just a disaster for Team New Zealand. We'll never outmuscle some of those big teams. You know, we've got to be smart, we've got to try and outthink them and we've, we've got to come up with you know, innovative ideas. The first race of the America's Cup goes to Emirates Team New Zealand. If you look back now, we were probably too conservative in the approach that we took, and that boat was tapped out pretty early. The question is, imagine if these guys lost from here. What an upset that would be. And obviously we were trying everything we could to squeeze more out of that boat, but we, but we couldn't. The comeback of 2013 is complete. We definitely had more appetite for risk in the Bermuda Cup. We thought, right, you know, we're, we're behind. We're not going to go there and tread the same path as they are and out-muscle them. We have anticipated these guys to be good. I don't think anybody anticipated them the Kiwis to be this good. And I think that's something that we've, we've got to after all these challenges and after all these cups that we've gone through, that it sort of all seemed to come together for that three months in Bermuda. The New Zealanders paddling into the history books. All that heartbreaking pain of San Francisco replaced by jubilation here in Bermuda. We're not trying to defend it, we're actually going out to try and win the cup. And all we're going to do is worry about, you know, the 6th of March and the 10 days after that and then, then take it from there. The America's Cup is the oldest and greatest obsession in international sport. It's dominated Max Serena's life for more than 20 years. He's won the Cup twice, but never for Italy. It's an historical fact that he is determined to change. I think the America's Cup is the maximum expression of sailing. Super start by Prada. Magnificent. Right on the back with the Panin. Brilliant time on distance by the Italians. When we came here the first time, it was incredible. The final with Paul Cagliar with America 1 was probably, is still, I think, one of the best uh, race ever in the history of sailing. America 1 has got a penalty. It is high drama here on the Haraki Gulf within a minute of the finish. It was a really good fight between two teams. Here goes the jive from America 1 who are carrying a penalty. The only way they can get out of this is get a penalty on Prada. I think no one was giving us a penny to be able to reach the America's Cup final. It's still a great memory and a good moment of my life. And Yellow and Prada have beaten America 1 in an unbelievable race. For sure, when we won the, the Louis Vuitton Cup on the first cup, it was uh, something uh, uh, incredible. And I will never thank enough for Mr. Bortelli and Luna Rossa for the, the opportunity they gave me.
From that cap, we change a little bit philosophy in the team. We build, uh, in theory, on paper, a stronger team than the first cap. But at the end, to win the America's Cup, you need a fast boat. You need a good crew, a good team. But at the end, uh, it's like a Formula One racing car. If your car is not fast enough, you can be the best driver, but you're going to finish second or third. It's Ari Vitucci Prada. And then we went to Valencia. We reached the Louis Vuitton final against Team New Zealand. I think we had a pretty good boat, but uh, it was probably a good boat for uh, a solid breeze, like over 15 knots. And unfortunately, we raced against the New Zealand in a light condition, apart one day where we actually fight and we, we almost win the race there. You cannot be perfect. You cannot even think to be perfect. You need to just be a little bit better than your opponent. Otherwise, uh, you, you're going to make more mistakes. The reality, I think we start a little bit too late, and for that reason we decide, well, let's use the cap in San Francisco to build a cold group for the next one, no? But we did well. We, we went to the final, and for the first time, actually, we took a point uh, in the history of Luna Rosa against New Zealand. I mean, we're going to be stronger next time. Peter Blake was always saying, if you don't try, if you never try, you will never win. So. And it makes sense. And, uh, and now we're here. We know New Zealand pretty really well. We've been here so many years in the past. It's going to be almost impossible to beat them because they're going to be fast, strong, uh, and we're here for that. And then if it goes uh, well, uh, it means we did better than them. But it's going to be tough. Auckland City, where summer is calling in 2020, 2021. And for 132 years, you know, the New York Yacht Club held on to the America's Cup. It was the longest winning record in sporting history. Now, after a 16 year break, the New York Yacht Club is back in the game and determined to bring the old mug home. 132 years of history as a defender. And here we are, back in it. So when you walk into the door of the New York Yacht Club and you come in the foyer and go up the stairs, there's, there's this table that is empty, but it has a light shining down on top of it. And, and that's reserved for one trophy. The gentleman that, that manages the front desk there, you know, he said, you gotta win this thing because <laughs> I can't retire until you do. <laughs> Having the opportunity to represent the history of the club and and everything that the America's Cup has been for the New York Yacht Club, having the opportunity to represent that is um, it's pretty special. You know, I'm sure that in the years following 1983, it was hard because it left a big void. When I look at it from the professional sailor perspective, I think when they lost in 83, you know, Dennis elevated the game by, you know, training all year in two boat programs and, you know, really an attention to detail that had never been seen before. And he dug a little bit deeper and, and he and Tom Whitten and the team that they assembled with Stars and Stripes went on to uh, probably the single best uh, sailing event because, you know, he lost and Dennis came back and won. I mean, to me, that is the absolute greatest comeback in America's Cup history. The America's Cup is America's again. It's the fourth successive victory in five days, ending the shortest America's Cup in 100 years. Yeah, I, I look at it and think that's just all paved the way to where we're sitting here today. As a sailor, I mean, I think that you kind of wake up every day and you pinch yourself a little bit because even though it is hard and there are a lot of landmines that you see and you don't see that come at you. And you can't help but be thankful for the opportunity. And so I think at the end of the day, the best part of it is in front of us. All we have to do is make sure that we leave nothing on the table. And when we get to March, then it'll be what it'll be. If it was our first rodeo, you'd be a little bit more nervous, but it's not. And, and so you, you know, you trust in the, 
the guys that you're standing next to and the, and the voices that you hear in the, in the earpiece to get it more right than wrong. So as long as we win, I'm going to sleep pretty darn well at night. Auckland City from the Haurahi Golf. What a beautiful sight on a summer's afternoon. But 170 years ago, the oldest trophy in world sport was won for the very first time. It was a radical yacht called America, and it beat the British on home waters and took the trophy back to the US. Now, Sir Ben Ainsley, who's up next, wants it back. The America's Cup is the pinnacle of sailing, really. So to be racing for, for the Cup, that's an incredible opportunity. There's no better uh, platform in, in the sport of sailing. Well, we were obviously a very proud maritime heritage, and we've won just about everything else in sport, but the America's Cup is the one thing that we've never won. That's something that kind of hurts, really, and it's 170-odd years of, of hurt. So that's our motivation to try and put that right. We came out of Bermuda, we didn't achieve the goal, but we learnt a lot, we developed a lot, and we came out of that with the ambition to learn from that campaign and come out stronger for this AC36. Out of all the America's Cups I've done, my fourth one, that one, I learnt the most by a mile. We had some moments in the build-up to Bermuda that were really bad. We had rudders blowing off the back of the boat we had all kinds of stuff going on within our foils and we just kept going we knew the whole world was looking at us but we stayed really really solid ah! wherever we could we 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 kind of laughed it off but it was hard Skipney, just to inform you we're retiring from this race Over. i mean in today's day and age when you it's real good that blokes like me middle-aged blokes like me can talk about their mental health there was a few of us that would have to go to the pub and have a few pints and talk really honestly and when i started my cup career 20 years ago you'd have been laughed at for having those conversations but that openness has set this open culture that that we have now yeah we had some big changes to the team from bermuda lots of learnings from that campaign and we did need to make some some pretty significant changes to take ourselves up to that next level of pushing for the win. Biggest change obviously would be Ineos and Jim Ratcliffe coming on board. Um, they've had a huge impact on the organisation both in terms of the financing but also the, the Ineos ethos of how they run their businesses and their other sports teams. You know, Everybody's here with that same will to win and that, that's what you want in a, that fighting spirit. I'm delighted with how the, how the squad have come together. You know, a lot of the guys from the last campaign, uh, some new faces, some younger faces coming through. And I, I think we're going to be a, a very potent team. You go back to when the Cup started, and it's a challenge between nations. And there's not very many nations that's won it. We'll be breathing down the necks of their Kiwis and be gunning for them to, uh, to take them down, get that America's Cup back where it belongs. North Head, it's a beautiful place, Mangoiki North Head, as we look across to Devonport and get ready for race number three. Two sides, two teams that haven't scored a point yet, Ineos Team UK and Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. Race number three of this first America's Cup World Series. Three minutes and 20 seconds before they get to race start. Remember the port boat, which is Ineos Team UK today, will be coming in from the port entry and is allowed two minutes and 10 seconds. And let's go to Shirley Robertson, our eyes on the water. I'd love to know your thoughts of the first two races, what you want to see in this third race, Shirley. I want to see a good race, Stephen, <laughs> without, without any issues. Ineos, in the gap between the race, must have had 20 technicians on the boat with, with toolboxes and computers. Uh, but now they're lining up for this start and are flying around. So hopefully we get a good match. So two minutes and 34 seconds and counting to the start of this third race in the America's Cup World Series. A reminder, the port entry will be Ineos Team UK. They are allowed to enter the, the box in two minutes and 10 seconds. Just a reminder, we, we saw a little bit of this in that you weren't fortunate enough to see some of the practice racing. If you are inside a minute, 
You'll get a penalty here. You've got to get inside that starting box before the 60-second mark. So here she comes in, well inside the 2 minute 10 second time limit. And Enios Team UK into the box, getting ready for the pre-start. I love the pre-start. Yeah, the pre-start's great, and they, you know, they're allowed that 10-second gap between the port boat and the starboard boat to avoid the good old dial-ups from the old days. But the dial-ups that I used to do happened with two boats going 12 knots, not two boats going 45 knots. Luna Rosa Prada really flies into the, the pre-start to start this, what has always been called the cat and mouse game. But sometimes, Nathan Utter, I wonder whether the mouse is in charge. Yeah, it's all about power control in these starts and, and manipulating the boat around you whilst keeping your boat on the foils and managing your own time on distance. The port tack entry boat here, Ineos Team UK, they're the ones that have to really decide the time to turn back. They've got computer software on board helping them with this, and really, the starboard entry boat has to react. You know, we we see here Ben Ainsley rolling into attack now, and the real question is, what is Luna Rossa going to do? Are they going to go past and push, or are they going to try and tack underneath and hold him out? And there they go, straight into it. Lured, tacking to Lewis, Ineos straight off the foils. I expect a full park up here. Jimmy Spittle's very aggressive in the starts and just shuts the race there's down. Going to be a, there's definitely a flag here, though. UK would, would be thinking that these guys tack too close. This is going to be fascinating to see. I'm guessing if I were a betting man right now, I'd be betting against Prada because I think they tack really close. Protest said no penalty Italy. Wow, amazing. Now, Italy, I think I think the wind instruments just nick the transom of the Italian the the wind instruments from Ineos. Italy, GBR, windward boat failing to keep clear. There you go. Umpires think there was contact, penalty, GBR. Both boats late for the start. What a turn of events. You know, that was really aggressive by Spithill coming in there, although we, it wasn't Spithill. That was Francesco Bruni on the port side wheel. He would have been a, the one that was making the tack. And now this is just, this is the same game that we've seen uh, guys over the last couple of days trying to get the boat out of the water once you splash. Strong arm tactics by Jimmy Spittle and Francesco Bruni, the twin helmsman on Luna Rossa to start out race three, and they Strong. are away. One, yeah. Pressure, yeah. We can accelerate Strong. this. We talked a little bit in the first race about the two drivers and the fact that they don't switch sides on Luna Rosa. We didn't not talk much about the fact that these guys have struggled during the practice sessions to get the boat out of the water, but this time with a little bit more breeze, it looks like it's slowly happening, but man, it's not as quick as the other guys, is it, Nathan? No, the boat does look heavy, really heavy to get out of the water. We know the boat can't be heavy. All the boats weigh the same amount. All the foil areas are more or less the same size, so it's it's got to be a bit of technique to get it up and going, but they're not easy boats to get going. You, you've got effectively no riding moment on these boats until it pops out of the water and you start getting a lift from that lured foil. So accelerating and getting going is always going to be an advantage of the lead boat when they have that luffing situation like that. But um, Ineos definitely need to work on their takeoffs, that's for sure. So we're on the first leg going up in this third race of the America's Cup World Series. i got to say, Jimmy Spittle, Francesco Bruni, elbows out. You gotta love this. <laughs> Welcome to the America's Cup, Stephen. <laughs> we, we expect, I think Nathan and I expect nothing different. It, just because these boats are radical and fast and have big old, you know, knife edges sticking out the sides of them doesn't mean they're not gonna go after each other. And uh, we just saw the proof of that right away. Well, Ken, I know a lot of the teams have simulators. You know, they are not only developing these boats with simulator like other sports like Formula One, for example, you can use a simulator to develop the boat to test foils and aerodynamic parts of the boat. But I know these guys are racing in the simulator too. They are doing all these different set maneuvers in the pre-starts. And it's, it's, a, it's a really interesting fact these days. So here we are in the pre-start. Ineos throws attack in and goes back at them on starboard. And once they tack back on starboard, you're going to see these guys come in and tack in very close underneath. Ben Ainsley puts his bow down. Now that it will probably try to get Richard in here, the chief umpire. I wonder if it was the fact that Ineos actually aggressively bore off at uh, Luna Rosa before that tack that made it clear. So maybe we can get Richard on, on with us. 
Yeah, hi, Kenny. It's Richard. Hey, so so was it the fact that Ben Ainsley was pointing down aggressively at the tacking boat that made that a clear foul? And then what did you see was the foul? Was there actually a nick between the boats? No, it was as close as you want to get, though. Uh, when Ben aimed aggressively down at them, halfway through that turn, Ben had to turn back up because he became the keep clear boat. Uh, the real issue came was when the boundaries, of, the keep clear boundaries of both of these boats uh, intersected. Um, and Ben had a chance to get out of there and he just stayed there. So it was, it was done probably five or six seconds later than, than that manoeuvre. And just for everybody at home, the keep clear boundaries, essentially you're drawing imaginary lines between the ends of the wings and the bow and the stern of the boat, correct? Yeah, I, I don't know if you can see my screen here, but I've just got it up on, on it. But we've, yeah, you basically build a sort of protection zone around the boats, and we don't want either of the protection zones touching. So. Right there, right there. There's, the, there's your screen. So you're drawing this imaginary lines right between the, the foils in the bow and the stern. Fascinating. Yep. So we got them that way. You got him. Is that what is that what umpires think when you no, give some no, poor no, no, no. sailboat racer a foul? You got him. That's terrible. Oh, it is terrible. <laughs> Come on, Ken. Of course, that's what they're thinking. Uh, You've I been knew on it. the receiving end of a penalty once or twice, haven't just, you? Just a couple times. I knew it. I knew they were out to get us. Uh, Shirley Robinson on water. That was a hell of a start. It was all looking so good for a moment there for Ineos Team UK. Hi, Oh, it was good to see a battle, wasn't it? And no, I, I tell you, Jimmy Spittle's elbows are always out, permanently. Uh, we're at the top mark. I don't know if you've seen the pictures. And um, there are also Prada out to go round. Not had the cleanest of our wins, but um, yeah, getting round the course. Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli at the top mark for the first time in race three of this America's Cup World Series, day one of three. There'll be 12 David, David, races through three days. Then we'll have yeah, seedings and a semi-finals, one versus four, two versus three, and Nuno Rosa heading on the downward leg now to complete lap number one. Yeah, it, it, it's super aggressive pre-start, obviously, and, and a foul, but um, we were also, like like Shirley said earlier, we were hoping for a sailboat race, and, and when the, when the, a gap like this occurs right off the starting line, a lot of times it's kind of it's kind of semi over for the poor boat behind. The encouraging though, thing though for Ineos Team UK because we know and we do know we've seen it. They were struggling to get up on the falls in the a couple of three, three days ago. They get up on the falls. They're getting them up. They're, they're, they're moving forward. They're moving forward. That's exactly correct. You know they'll have really valuable data from the, the boat racing tonight. They'll have valuable data from that moment. And uh, hey, then they'll have times from mark to mark. Let's see if they can gain. The gain will be a good one if they can get it going. Okay, Enios Team UK, who had a, a breakage in their first okay, race, are going OK three. now, but hell of a start. And they got out-muscled by Jimmy Spittle and Luno Rosa at the start, and they round the top gate for the first time. Got that left or that right hand mark as you see it right now. It hit on back down on leg number two. Three laps, three times, up and down the course. Nathan, this is where they struggled each of the last uh, two times they went around this mark was this particular jive. I think the reason why they could be struggling is it's really puffy up there. You know, the, the, the wind is coming off the land. It's bouncing over the little volcanoes that are further to the southwest. You can see here from above, there's just dark patches and light patches of breeze. And it makes the boat incredibly hard to sail. You can see here, they're, they're running out of pressure. They really need to get this jive before they go out of bounds. It's, it's uh, definitely uh, not going their way right now. What's also interesting is you see Luna Rossi doing a jibe in the middle of the race course. Normally, these boats are bouncing boundary to boundary, banging the corners as they go down the course. But clearly, the wind must be funneling a long north head down this left-hand side as we're looking downwind. Some concerns with Enios. Let's listen on board, see what's going on. Yeah, copy. OK, chase force, chase, chase force coming in. Yeah. OK, they're out. So something's yeah, happened again with Enios. Yeah, we've got yeah. his yacht, so... Uh, we might need chase three side on. No, they can't hear us, Giles. So yeah, when they uh, when they call in the chase boats, we should get there. That's yeah, obvious. Sure it's a support. very obvious sign. But they're also concerned about getting themselves into the spectator fleet because essentially the boat is completely unmaneuverable at this yeah. stage. They they have no control. So they'll get a chase boat. 
in. Just make sure, Freddie, they know that we need them on the toe here, mate. Make sure they know because so we're going to run into these folks. Again, for any us team okay, UK, okay. when you talk uh, about unmovable, unmanoeuvrable, yeah. that's a pretty good example. They're a bit like a log in the water, these boats, aren't they, when you're off your foils? Even if it's a forward toe. I think what's happened here is they've got an issue yeah, with their whatever. foil cant system. Ready, that's lifting and dropping those. the boards. And you can hear the, the nervous up. voices on board here. They're, they're worried about going to the spectator fleet and right, potentially in, even capsizing this boat. They don't want to sit upright, that's for sure. When the sails are up and you, and you means. stop, everyone's doing what they can here. What they really yeah. need to do is get that, that windward foil down vertical and but then they, the boat will might get be, some stability. That might be broken. That, that may be their problem. I saw Ben uh, violently pointing down below like we got a problem got down guys. there. So, uh, yeah. Meanwhile, in the happy world of Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli, they are speeding towards the bottom gate for the first time. Um, they appear to be approaching the right-hand markers as we see it. Make their drive in towards the gate. And the interesting uh, race committee, we, we race committee, and US team UK, two. we're having to retire from this race. Thanks. Confirmation then out, from Subin Ainsley. Thank you, Eos. Uh, Eos team UK have retired to... from the race. So that's. I'm not going to say uh, disastrous because okay. that's yeah. early days, but it's, Thanks, it Robert. must be incredibly disappointing for the team. Yes. Well, yeah, of course, but again, this is what practice is for. They're, they have to get out here and, and break things and, and so make sure that... The umpires you know, um, have awarded the race to uh, Luna Rossa uh, with outside help and retirement of Ineos. There you go. So it's a short race. Okay, boys, so the, a, they've already uh, awarded us the race, but we keep doing another lap just for practice. Yeah, I agree. I knew they, they were going to say that. This is data. This is a, this is the, the world we live in is full of data. So these guys are on this racetrack, kind of competing against themselves right now, trying to perfect their tacks, trying, trying to per, uh, protect their jives, perfect their jives. Ken, the other thing they'll be doing is they want to learn this race course. The teams have been here for months training on the race course, learning okay. the venue. Yeah, race right and there, what race happens is as the weather slowly ahead. changes coming into summer, Luna what they were doing here in November or October when they were sailing, the weather is slowly changing and evolving. And so they want to learn the race course. Yep. And don't forget also, the whole yeah, race course that. is we'll there. You know, normally when they're out sailing, they're dealing with ferries, they're dealing with the shipping that comes in and out. They're dealing with all sorts of recreational sailing. Finally get the, they get the race course to themselves and they can do some laps and collect data. Good point. I wonder if the race committee is going to tell them to get off at some stage so they can start that next race. No, the uh, race committee said you, you, if you choose, you can continue to do a race on the course. So they've chosen to do that. We have had Jimmy Spittle say that they would like to do another lap. I told his crew they'd like to do another lap. So confirmation, race awarded to Luno Russa Prada Pirelli in race three of the America's Cup World Series. A retirement from Enios Team UK who have had a, a less than satisfactory day out on the water on course C, which is one of the magnificent stadium courses here for America's Cup 36 here in Auckland. Perfect opportunity for us here to just to listen in on board as, as they're going around the race course. And it must be so frustrating for, for these guys right now. Right, we've got Chase 3 coming along, starboard side. Okay, keep going down. Yeah, uh, Chase 4, don't come away anymore. That's good. It's, it's now at like 30 degrees. If you could get it down further, it'd be good, tell him. Crazy. Can someone tell Pete? He's talking about the foil can't, can't angle. You know, it's, it's how much that foil is up or down, and there's all these yeah, different angles. Here, all the way up is uh, retracted yeah. up. That's rough, maximum riding moment. That's the windward foil that you're going. All the way down is be, when you uh, tow the boat back the into the dock. Like this, so. And there's all these different Let's instruments in between. This is a one design part just between all board, the teams. Jake. And what if we don't know and what we'll never know is, is it a one design componentry failure out, that is Jake. mechanical? Yeah, worry, or is it an issue on the, the software side of things? Is it an issue that yeah, the no, team has to resolve or is it an Jake. issue that the event has to solve for them? And it's, it's a really frustrating situation to be in right now. And 
We're going to find out when they get Probably. back to the press conference this afternoon and Ben explains to us, you know, where they're at. But we know they've had issues for a week now. It looks like they're trying to, like, almost manually get that thing down right now because the boat is so unstable without those foils down, well down into the water when it's parked like this. They have to get them down or they almost can't get the boat back into the dock. It's good now. Frustration must be top of mind for this whole team at the moment. Yeah, copy. Concerns in the first race that they had with the gear issue with the rudder cable that saw the big splash down. And now this, retiring from race number three, their second race of the America's Cup World Series. Well, let's just hope it's nothing so major that they can't get back out here the next couple days. You know, that's they need this time. It's very clear. All the boats need this time, but they need this time on the water, and let's just hope that this isn't a part that is so major that it uh, Sorry, keeps them from getting back out on the water. Okay, copy. Frustration right there, eh? You're, you're on that British boat, and you see the other guys still yeah, ripping around the race course. Yeah, it's incredibly frustrating. There's nothing worse for a sailor or a team to, you know, show up to your first day racing and have a failure like this. You know, they, they missed a lot of the practice races because they had issues last week, and we don't know if this is a continuation of the same issue or if this is a new issue, but one thing I can tell you, these boats are so complicated, and there is so much software and systems inside them easy to happen. What's going on right now reminds me of what the late Sir Peter Blake said. He said it's not a game for the person who was not prepared to come back. Wise words from the Sir Peter Blake. Hey, my runner. Hey, my trav, come on. Crossing. Yeah. Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli now in practice mode. If you are just joining us wherever you are around the world. They have been awarded race number three of, on the opening day of the America's Cup World Series after a retirement call from Ineos Team UK. So Luna Orosa Prada Pirelli will pick up a point for the winners. They round the top gate. They said they would do one more lap, offered the opportunity to race, continue racing by the race committee, and they have done so because practice, as Nathan Allerage has said, is so important to get a real feel, way, a little feel for these okay. race courses. That left turn looks Two. really One. tricky. You come around there, I've seen a lot of teams really struggling with the heel around there. Shirley, you're on the water. We've had a lot of footage of Ineos Team UK dealing with their, their problems on board. I'm hoping you're following the race closely, with the Luna Rossa closely. How do they look compared to the first race? Oh, yeah, we're right beside them. We've done every tack and jive with them. You get G-force on the chase boat, <laughs> as, well as, as well as on the yacht. I, I think they're really working on changing gears. And as, you, as you can see on screen, it's really quite puffy and shifty, particularly up at the marks. It's very close to the land there, and there's all the spectator boats. Uh, and when comparing them to the Kiwis, you know, the Kiwis could, they were versatile. They could ride out a lull beautifully and, and, and just kind of keep going. And I think that's why Jimmy really wanted to, to do that leg again. And, and it looked a little bit smoother at that time, less touching down. Um, and, you know, Nathan will tell us it's a combination, isn't it, of, of adjusting the foils and also, you know, the trim of the sails. There's a lot to get right. Uh, in, but the Kiwis, you know, they were on rails. They were, whatever the wind was doing, they just looked so steady. And for sure, you know, the challengers, they got a long way to go. They need to practice and really get good at changing those gears, making those changes. Yes, yeah, Shirley, I think you're absolutely right, and, and it's, it's amazing for us to have your eyes so close to the action. I, I remember when I was sailing, you know, the, the AC-50s in Bermuda. It's just small little things that can make really large performance differences. If you get in sync with the mainsail trimmer and if the guy flying the boat is perfectly in sync with your driving, you are just doing little ups and downs, little trim on, little trim off, little flap adjustments, and the boat is just tracking nicely. As soon as one person gets out of sync, the boat starts to wobble, you get the odd touchdown, and I think the difference that we saw and what you pointed to there, Shirley, was that 
these guys just getting a few more wobbles every now and then compared to what we saw in the first race against Emirates Team New Zealand. And time on the water is, is the most important thing right now. The fundamental design of these boats is committed. Yes, you can do some tweaking with your design work, but it's all about how, how hard you can push the boats and how well you work with your teammates. What I would love to know as we talk about making incremental gains, because these are literally like cars and aero is so important. Funny From a sailing here. perspective, Kenny, when we talk about into incremental I gains with this class, the AC75, are we talking hundreds of seconds? Are we talking thousands of seconds to, to be the difference? Or do we have to take it because they are so big and so changeable? Are we talking knots three. by knot or two knots or three knots? Well, you're, you're always chipping away at, at li little gains are not quite as exhilarating as big gains, but you're chipping away at anything you possibly can. And there's never just one s silver bullet. It's everything. Uh, you know, uh, these new twin skin mainsails, how, how they can completely control the top four meters of the sail and the bottom two meters of the sail, like never before in, in, in sailing. Who has done that well and who hasn't done that well? Is it, is it the foils below the water that are making the big differences? Is it how they can control the, the mainsail shapes so dramatically and keeping, and keeping, it, uh, keeping the boat smooth? Um, I, 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 it's very funny. I, I, I'm getting lots of text messages from friends around the world. Talk about this. Talk about this, folks. We got we got three and a half months to talk about all these things. We can't we can't burn it all up on day number one. You know, the splash of the water off the foils and the length of the wings and the rudder shape differences and the hull shape differences. I mean, that's the big radical thing. But we got a lot. We got a lot of talking to do, everybody. So we can't we can't kill it all in one day. Big crowds in for day one of the Americas Cup World Series. They love their racing here in Auckland, New Zealand, and New Zealand in general. Kids out, mums out, all wearing their hats. Well, most of them wearing their hats. And here in this part of the world, the key is to, they say, is to slip, slop, and slap. In other words, just put that suntan lotion on and make sure you're doing the right thing. Look at me, mum, I'm on television. Phones to the ears. And then you get those that are wise. They sit under the umbrellas and... I was a nice liquid and to cool themselves down. I was down there yesterday afternoon and under the umbrellas. You, under the umbrellas, I happened to be, and uh, and we had a nice little cold beverage. And I'll tell you what, they've done a great job along the waterfront here and, and building a wonderful park and for everybody to enjoy. How could you not enjoy this environment right now? We are very fortunate in this part of the world. And we should never take that for granted. This is day one of the America's Cup World Series. Just to remind you what happened in race number three, a retirement from Enios Team UK with huge gear failure. Well, that's what we are assuming. It's always dangerous to assume, but it looked pretty pretty darn problematic. Well, it could be it could be something like a little hydraulic hose. It could Someone be a fitting. Screw that screw, right? Yeah, well, you keep trying to blame it on humans. I'm trying to blame it on the mechanical part because the humans that, that deal with those boats are huge, and they're going to track you down if you're not careful. And, and, and there's a lot of them also. Don't you worry about that. And they're just next door to where our compound is. So be careful what you say. Right. His, his name is Stephen. He's right here. It's, it's Nathan and I. We'll send him your way. <laughs> <laughs> it is a magnificent sight, though. If you've never seen these AC 75s before, if you've never seen sailing before, it is. It, it, it defies belief, it defies logic how what a magnificent job these designers and builders have done to see six and a half ton yacht up on a single fall and a rudder. Remember everybody, we have one more race to go and this is kind of right now the highlight race of this regatta so far as to this point and that will be uh, New York Yacht Club's American Magic versus the Defender, Emirates Team New Zealand. So this is, uh, this is a bit of a well, it's a bit of a grudge match, maybe. If you can, if you can have a grudge match early in a rega in an event like this, the, the the Americans beat up the Kiwis in one of the practice races the other day. Wow, you said beat up. You well, called ten <laughs> seconds being a beat up. Well, it's all relative, isn't it? Any loss by Emirates Team New Zealand is a bit of a surprise. Oh, these poor guys. It's so frustrating, isn't it? There is the sad side of any of Team UK. Almost, I don't wish to be unkind, but they, it looks benched. 
it's just a shame. Just so much work and so much effort. Let's just hope, 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 hope that this is a small problem and not a huge one. And uh, they, it's fixable and get them back out on the water because, like I said, they, they, they need, they all need time on the water. They need time on the water. Just them, as you have said before, Kenny, it's the machinations of the America's Cup. And this happens early in the piece. We're not even at the Challenger Series, the Prada Cup, which begins January 15, 2021, here at Auckland, nice, New Zealand. As we look at Nuno Rosa Prada Pirelli, awarded the race. So they get a point. American Magic have a point. And Emirates Team New Zealand have a point. Okay, There'll be seedings at the end of all of this. Guys, one thing I thought we might take an opportunity to look at or discuss a bit is while they're doing their, their practice racing around, it's just some of the stats on these boats in terms of their design. So the boat weights are between 7.789 tonnes and 7.819 tonnes. There are heavy boats, heavy, heavy boats. The length of the boats is 68 foot long with the bowsprit at the front of 75 foot. And the width of the boat is a maximum of five meters. What you're saying, it's a lot of boat. It's a lot of boat out there. It's a heavy boat. Maybe not for a monohull with a keel on the bottom of it, but it's a heavy boat and there's a lot of load and forces going through these boats. It's, a, it's, a, it's an impressive machine. You know, the, the foils that they're fo flying on, are not very big for the size of the boat overall. And the speeds at which they can generate are very impressive. Bruno Rosa, Prada Pirelli, just doing some practice laps. And I think another reason they're keeping them on the race course is they want to stick to schedule. These other two boats uh, who are going to be in race number four have a time that they are scheduled to start. Confirmation that is at 5.20 local time. All right, everybody stick, local time. stick with us. 5.20 local time and uh, you, know, you can't just, you just can't say to a team out here with these complex boats and complex systems and complex crews. Hey, by the way, can everybody start a half an hour early? No, 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 no. Every, everything's scheduled. Well, while we are looking at Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli, the one thing that still fascinates me, and I know you you, you love sails, Kenny, love is that there's no idea. solid boom in the, the, the mainsail of Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli nor Emirates Team New Zealand. Yeah, we have two completely different concepts. We have really kind of a structured boom, uh, nor you just call it a normal boom for that matter, on on two of the boats, and then on the other two boats, something completely different. And that's that's what I mean. We're going to get under the hood of of how these sails, uh, how these sails actually work, and and again the systems, the systems that go into adjusting these sails, the amount of camber that they're putting into that mainsail downwind. Look at it. There's a there, lots of depth right there in that in that mainsail, and there's no boom. You're also going to notice that there's nothing sticking out the back, and and there's no boom. So it's uh you know the, the boom would be right in this area, and look at the camber, all the depth from the bottom of that mainsail when they're going downwind. So it's really uh, very different concepts on on Luna Rosa and Emirates two, Team New Zealand versus and there's also two mainsails up there. You can't see it right now because they look attached, but that fares in the back of the of the mast. And, you know, it really makes it act like a hard wing rather than a soft wing. It, it's as close to, with a soft product, it's as, as close to an actual wing as we've ever seen a soft product be able to do. Fascinating. And they're just learning. I, I talked to a lot of the teams. I, I talked to all the sail designers. Um, they're just starting to learn how to how to how to use these things, and they're all fascinated at the other boat, Nathan. You know, it's part of the mystique. All the boats are always following around the other boats with their chase with their chase boats, and they're trying to figure out how others look at look at the depth in the in the top of that sail right now, and that will be four that will be flat when you go up with just incredible. Surely. Th these guys, you're you're still following these guys. They're just ripping around yeah. the race course, and it's gorgeous. <laughs> I get my miles in, that's for sure. I'm interesting the mains, and I'm so looking forward to finding out a bit more. I mean, the.
the coffee shop chat in the mornings is about the Kiwi systems. What's inside those two main cells? You know how they can bend the mass more than anyone else and uh, get more camber and, and all of that. And we're going to see that develop, aren't we, over the, over the coming weeks? And uh, it's frustrating because we can't actually see it, but uh, we're definitely going to see speed differences in, in there. It's, it's really interesting. Hello, Mark. Hello. Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli, the challenger of record in the third race of this America's Cup World Series on day number one, conclude their race. Was awarded a couple of laps back after a breakage by Enios Team UK, but they do the job and I know it's Italian. Boy, they look pretty. <laughs> Always to be expected. A great, uh, aggressive match racing start. Really, I give Francesco Bruni. It, it, it's very easy to give Jimmy Spithill because of his because of his uh, multiple America's Cup wins the credit. But the, these guys are doing something that's never been done before, Nathan. They're, they pick a side. Spithill on the starboard side, Bruni on the port side, and they're driving off of that side and they're not moving. So it's really American something that we've never seen before. King New Zealand, yeah, yeah you're absolutely right, Kenny. They're sharing out the driving duties, they're sharing out the tactical decision making, and they're even sharing who's flying the boat. So, you know, I think for a very long period of time, people thought, you know, there's a helmsman, he has to drive the boat, he has to be in charge of what's going on, he listens to his tactician, he makes all these decisions. But what we're seeing today is that, you know, there are different ways to skin this cat, and it's a big teamwork effort. Bruni, Bruni did a really nice job in that pre-start. He, he, he tucked it in there tight, like Richard Slater said, our chief umpire. He wouldn't have wanted to see it any closer than that, but, but he considered that no harm, no foul. Tucked it in tight. They got uh, Ainsley in a tough spot, and sure enough, he broke that imaginary boundary between the outside tip of the foil and the transom and got a penalty. Let's go to Ben Ainsley right now. Ben, what happened? Uh, we had a, well, we've been having issues all day with our foil can system and, and batteries. So uh, it's um, been, a, been a challenge for us, to be honest, just to sail the boat. And unfortunately, the whole thing shut down in that last race. We couldn't uh, lift or drop our boards. And so we had to pull out. So it's a real shame. It is a shame, but Ben, it sounds like it may be fixable. I mean, I, I, I've been in that spot. You're walking around right now saying, oh, please let it be fixable so we can get out here tomorrow. Yeah, I think it's fixable. You know, the guys here, Andy and Joe, uh, I mean, they, those are guys who uh, solid, you know, putting their solid hours and trying to get the boat operational for us. So, you know, we'll be, we'll be out tomorrow, but it's just, you know, these boats are so technical that we go through periods where it just shuts down on you, and it's uh, it's a tough position to be in. One final thought, Ben. How are you feeling? <laughs> I had better days. I had better days, but you know, this is uh, this is the America's Cup. It's, it's a it's a development sport, it's a technical sport. It's part of the challenge, and uh, we'll go back, we'll regroup, we'll come back, have a better day tomorrow. Nice words, thanks, mate. Good luck. And there it is, the Waitamata Harbour on a wonderful Thursday on the 17th of December 2020 here in Auckland, New Zealand. It, it is a magnificent sight. And this is the venue for the 36th America's Cup. Let's go back on that race. Well, this all happened in the pre-start and we had our first real confrontation between two boats. Ainsley aggressively tacks to starboard and puts his bow right down at Luna Rosa. Remember, he's coming at him going almost 40 knots right there. So this is not for the faint of heart, but the judges determined that Prada kept clear, did their tack, and all of a sudden Ainsley is in a tough spot. Windward boat. Can he keep that boat out of the way? And remember, it's not running in. At one stage, I thought the wind instruments actually ticked the back of, uh, of Prada, but they say it didn't. I, it was close right there. Well, Richard Slater obviously said it was too close for his liking and the penalty was given. Penalty clear, penalty clear. So, that, so all of a sudden we got that same, that spot that Nathan's been talking about is, is where they get down in the water on Ineos and they've been struggling to get out of the water. And when that happens, just distance gets chewed up, just gets put on so fast, and, and they're gone.
Well, but then we had the big issue, and this is the issue that ended their day. Uh, they splash down into the water and have no way to actually move one of their cant arms, as Ben Ainsley just reported to us. They have uh, batteries and a canting system uh, failure, and they think it's fixable. They think they're going to be out again, but they have to withdraw. And not just withdraw, but it gets a little dicey, because these boats are very, very... Uh, tough to keep degrees. upright if you're not you careful and there's time. boats out right in front of them uh so they're they're you know they you heard some tension there for a couple minutes race of the day. Two winners from their races. American Magic on the left, Emirates Team New Zealand on the right. Two boats that are extremely quick. Shirley Robertson called American Magic hot. She thinks Emirates Team New Zealand are on rails. Let's go to Shirley Robertson. What excites you most about this race, Shirley? This is the match of the day, Stephen, isn't it? You're the two winners uh, from today. And both we think are going pretty well. So excited to see how the Americans match up in, in, in the breeze. It's going to be good. I think we all just want to see a boat race. We haven't seen a boat race yet. You know, we've seen amazing yeah, no, we footage. We've we seen one year off, boys. a new class, a new new stuff that we've ever never seen before. The sailing world, the sporting okay, world has never seen time, before, but I think we'd like to see a race. Let's see something close and let's see uh, how these guys start maneuvering in close quarters. Hey, 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 so Under four minutes to race start to this fourth normal. and final Lots race of the day. Day number one of the America's Cup World Series and two winners. Who can have a perfect record by the end of the day? Will it be American Turn Magic back in the game for the first time since 2003 when you were on the waters here in the Hauraki Gold, yeah. Kenny. That's yep. not that long ago. And Emirates. Thank you, Stephen. Emirates team, New Zealand, the yep. defender. And Dean yeah, Barker, two Kiwi little skippers. Little you know, that's that's sort of the irony of all of us. Dean yeah, Barker knows what it's great. like to sail on these water. He grew up on these waters. He's won the, the America's Cup. And now he's look at look at the pressure, Nathan, on, on that wheel. It just shows you how quick the boats are going and, and how much load he's got through the wheel and the concentration required to drive these boats. Just to zip around and pre-start the concentration that's necessary. Down here and he's, he's just trying to put the boat in the right position to enter on time, and that's why the course, you know, the, the people out there watching it probably think there's plenty of space for these boats, but when you're on board, he can never have too much space on a boat that goes this fast. And Are you suggesting the pre-start's not big enough for these boats? Uh, yeah. The pre-start could never be too big. You know, the last thing you really want to do is turn back to the start line before you have to, you know, you want to go as far as you can, make your manoeuvre and come yeah, back. Going, but guys. Yeah, I think good. it's yeah. going to be hammer and tongs Entry here in a minute. Two minutes and 32 really seconds oh, left before yeah. the port yeah. boat yeah. can yeah. enter. The port yeah. boat in this yeah. race yeah. will be American yeah. Magic. The starboard boat entering into the box will be Emirates Team New Zealand. In the practice racing, Stephen, we have seen that boats that are not up. I tell you what, these guys are not, they're not late by any means. They're going to be right on time or... Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow, that is close. That was beautifully done. Almost perfect, right? It's what we call in this part of the world. Uh, American Magic are honking into there. Honking. Honking. Well, and New Zealand aren't foiling Yeah, see, what I, I started to say was we've seen the mistakes being made by the teams that aren't foiling in their preparation soon enough and do what Team New Zealand's doing right now is that they struggle to get up on the wings, up on the foils. So, so it's really... This is a pre they're learning, but this is a preparation. You can't pre you can't get up on the foils soon enough to make sure you're not having the problem that Emirates Team New Zealand just had and enter really late and kind of behind the eight ball. Emirates Team New Zealand are into the start box. One minute and 26 seconds left to race up here. start race number four. Why wouldn't more people want to do this? <laughs> Fire hose in the face. There's nothing better than that, is there? But you're absolutely right, Ken. I remember when we we'll prepping for all our starts there in Bermuda. It's about five minutes out, you're in this position. Two minutes out, you're in this position. It's all about your positioning and timing. And right now, Team New Zealanders look like they don't want to even engage with 
American magic at all. They're staying as far away from them as they can. Counting down to race number four, day one of the America's Cup World Series. A little on 50 seconds to go for the start of this race. Both these teams have got one under their belt. American Magic over Ineos, Emirates Team New Zealand over Luna Rosa, which was the opening race of the day. And now it would appear that Emirates Team New Zealand wants to engage. Port starboard coming up, but again, Emirates Team New Zealand tacks well underneath, but comes off the foils yet again. Boy, oh boy, they look like they have a problem. We have not seen them this this smooth or unsmooth for a while. Time to the line. You take it, Pete. I'll get it last. Last. Turning back up here at three, two, one. Right. one three, all the lines open now. They're coming all the way up here. All the way up. Yeah, somebody says I got nothing. So they had they have had a problem here. That was a great start by American Magic. They uh, I thought at one moment there they were gonna get locked out, but Team New Zealand just clearly had some kind of problem, whether it was a time on distance issue or they've actually got a physical problem on board, but Dean Barker owned that. You heard you heard Ashby say something about a problem. So all right. Hopefully they're fired turning. up and, and ready to go. Let's see if they can get it back together. Two, one, keep pushing, turning. Yep. Oh, hey, don't need to trip anymore. You won't get it back up. I think they got a traveler issue because if they ease it, he said, it, don't ease it anymore or you won't get it back up. Like they got an issue. Yeah, yeah, nice, bro. Okay, pacing up us. Probably just trying to get locked in there, boys. Traveler's moving. Good angle for Bill, pick no high. Okay. Still struggling to get the jib here, fellas. Going track in. Plenty of chat on board about their systems and communicating what's going on. I guess they're probably, you know, whenever you do have an issue or you think you have an issue, you start going through all the different systems on the boat. Okay, this one's working, that one's working, and you debug it as you're racing. It's, it's part of the skill of being a high performance racer. You've got to understand your mach machinery. Race start one, and you give that to American Magic without even blinking technical gear issues with Emirates Team New Zealand, but both falling and at pace. Let's see if Emirates Team New Zealand has their act back together with regards to all the systems on board. If they do, then this is as close to a boat race as we've had so far, and uh, we could see some excitement. New Zealand with the superior speed difference. Not a heck of a lot, but they are running quick yeah, roughly to that top gate. Stop working it up there. And in 25, you stay here, Goody. He'll be brought down, so he's brought down. Three, two, one, brought down. So, so yeah, they, go ahead, Nathan. I was going to say, that's the voice of Dean Barker. He was just checking out what was happening to Lewitt. Eyes through that window there, and he just wants to match tax with Emirates Team New Zealand. You know, what we call this right now is being in phase with your opposition. They had a... A loose cover when they're on port tack, but as soon as Team New Zealand tacked on the boundary, right Dean just slams straight on top of him and just keeps control of the race. And they would have had a what real... Are we doing here? Ver, they would have had a, 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 a key word there between the tactician and Dean Barker, which means just slam, slam him right on the nose as soon as he starts to tack. And they used... You heard him use the foils as their key to that their, the other boat's going to tack. It's one of the problems here. You can't do anything quietly on these boats. If you're going to tack, the foil goes down. That gives the other boat the warning, hey, they're tacking. Let's, do we want to do something about it? So American Magic with a 100, just say, let's say just under 200 meter lead on Emirates Team New Zealand. Emirates Team New Zealand with a slight speed advantage as they head towards that, we'll call it the left hand side boundary. And the top gate for the first of three laps, up and down three times, that's six legs. We are on leg one of six, and it's Patriot leading tier level time. Uh, red line you see on the screen there is the, the virtual ley line to the top mark. So these guys are very, very close to the ley line. But what we do know is that it's really shifting, gusty at the top of the course. Shirley, how does it look right up there now? It looks like it's really puffy from what we can see. Yeah, the, the same as before, Nathan. The closer they get to the spectator feet, these top marks, you know, the more unstable the breeze is. Massive holes, but also massive puffs of wind. I mean, really difficult 
to deal with, and, uh, and actually they look like they're doing a pretty good job, the Americans. American Magic approaching the top gate for the first time. They're taking the right-hand marker. And around they go, leading Emirates Team New Zealand. Look at the work that Dean Parker is doing on that wheel, hanging on for dear life as Emirates Team New Zealand now head into that top gate. And around they go, and they are the chaser. That's your almost your ankle there. Send it, send it, send it. He's just itching for that uh, traveler to come up right there, uh, Nathan, so he could keep the power on the boat. But one thing that's very clearly happening when in all the other races so far today, when the boat got behind, it got way behind really fast. These guys are keeping it a race. So, the, you know, we got two pretty equal boats here right now. Yeah, they're keeping it tight. Right? The, the, the thing that caught my eye around those top marks is the intensity in the face of both Dean Barker and Pete Burling. Uh, any boat, any high performance boat, when you go to do that bear away, it's the fastest moment of sail. It's when you go from upwind to downwind where you, you're going to get extra power. And look at the wheel shaking in Dean Barker's hands here right now. It's, uh, it's got some load on it, and they are absolutely ripping down the sail. And on the practice race we saw, which they won by 10 seconds, their downward speed was incredibly quick. They're sitting at 43 knots. They are well quicker right now than Emirates Team New Zealand downwind. But it's going to Look at the angle differences between the boats. You know, the, 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 Kiwi, the Kiwis, they must be 10 degrees lower right now when it comes to it. Here's their angle. Their angle straight down, and the other guy's going away. So a big BMG difference. It could be how they're sailing the boat, or it just could be a puff on the race course. Okay, you've thrown out BMG, Kenny, so we're going to have to go there early in this... Uh, this cycle of the America's up velocity made good. Well, we got the new guy in the, so, so, no, no, I won't. I won't <laughs> Don't throw me under the bus, it's your turn, explain it. The angle and the speed, the angle and speed, the combination of the two gets you closest or fastest to the mark. The boat with the highest VMG will always get to the mark fastest. It was really obvious there from the helicopter shots that we had really puffy conditions on the race course and and the difference in three or four knots of wind speed could be the difference in 10 degrees of angle when you're going downwind here yeah. big difference remember they jive right behind each other and uh and all of a sudden just a huge angle difference Dean barker and patrick look on point don't they they do, and they're sailing very differently. We were talking in the last race about the camber, the extreme camber between uh, between Luna Rosa, that Luna Rosa was creating downwind. It, it sure looks like the Americans are doing it very differently. They're sailing with a really flat mainsail downwind compared to the other boats. So again, this is stuff that that all the teams are going to be looking at each other and trying to learn from each other. But these guys are not slow downwind. There's no question about it. Now you notice that right Team New Zealand made another jive down that run. You, you, the helicopter shot showed American Magic lifting up out of that pressure. Team New Zealand said rather than following them, we'll just jive back through it again. So they've done an extra couple of jibes down this run. And, and maneuvering, you lose distance, but sailing and less when you also lose distance. But what they're trying to do is they're trying to set up a split at the bottom gate. But it looks like Dean Barker is all over it and he places a jibe right in front of them. Both boats coming in on starb attack to the bottom mark. American Magic flying into the bottom gate for the first time to complete lap one of three, and they are flying as they take the right hand mark and head to the start of the second lap. They go upwind to that top gate, but not too far behind is Emirates at Team New Zealand. Here come Peter Burling and the crew. And around they go, but they certainly are chasing that mouse. Both teams look exceptionally smooth. This is a really hard maneuver. Round the mark and go right into attack. Really hard maneuver, Nathan, and sure enough, it did not go well. This is something we've not seen before. In all the practice training, practice races that we've been looking at in Auckland, they haven't been doing this. So I don't know if it's pressure or if they actually have some issue on board that's making them look a bit sticky. But I can tell you one thing, you do attack like that and that's 20 seconds you're never going to get back. 
I'm surprised they took that chance right there because they were only 200 meters behind and the other boat was just turning to go upwind, so probably get a little closer than that. I'm surprised, but again, it's practice. Let's see if we can pull this maneuver off. They got something to go look at after the fact, but again, from a racing standpoint, I'm surprised they kind of took that chance. And we're only, what, a third of the way into the race, too. Magnificent sight. The bows of these AC 75s. We travel down the side of Emirates Team New Skiff. So trying to build in, funny. It really is a sight to behold as they fly towards the top gate for the second time. 200 meters turned into 400 meters on that one splashdown. You know, that you just you can't afford it. You can't do it. Emirates team New Zealand traveling close to 40 knots. USA traveling around 37 knots. They are flying. Surely that uh, lured mark rounding was not pretty for Emirates team New Zealand, was it? We're not used to seeing that, are we, Kenny? Actually, it, to me, this is not the Kiwi team that we saw in the first race. I mean, I, I definitely think something is not right on board. Um, lots of little things like the jibs not even coming in quick enough. They're, they're up and down, they're touching down quite a lot. It's just not the, the flawless, consistent, on-rail Kiwi team that we saw earlier in the day. So it'll be interesting to hear. Um, what's actually going on. Saying that, though, looking at the American team, they, they look solid. They're fast in a straight line. Um, I know they're confident about their, their windy weather speed. You know, they, they think they're fast. Um, but I'm not sure this is, is quite the match that, that we thought it was going to be. I'm going to make my line. Yep. I'm back in 10 here. Three, two, one. All right. One thing it looks to me is that the, the jib on American Magic is a little bit smaller than what Emirates Team New Zealand are using. I know they've got four or five different codes of jibs, and I've heard the sailors talking a lot about how critical it is to, to pick the right sails for this race. I don't think that's, you know, completely the issue here right now. I think that there's probably some other issue happening on Team New Zealand that we're not aware about, but American Magic look like they've they're, they're locked in. They're dialed in. Well, and they're down in the water again. The Kiwis are uh, were down in the water again there for a second, I believe. So we, we, we were giving uh, we were giving Sir Ben the, the benefit of the doubt in that last race that something must have been wrong. You know, these guys definitely had problems in the pre-start. There must there might be something wrong on board the boat as well. Hi boys, going well. Nice That's the voice of Glenn Ashby. He's uh, still got some upbeat Probably tone in his voice. He knows Probably. that they've got a problem on board. They're just Probably dealing with it. And again, it's you never know that there could be a problem might that might, might happen on the other boat. Let's keep it close and let's try and stay close enough. If, if an opportunity presents itself, they want to take this race win. Which, by the way, is, leads to another reason why that lured mark, you know, kind of uncharacteristic move might not have been the right, you know, they're, they're going to go back and look at that. Might not have been the right call at that moment in time. You got two thirds of the race to go. You think you got a quick vote? Why take that chance and kind of end the race as it looks, at least right now, in one maneuver. Patriot representing the New York Yachts Club back in the game on the Hauraki goal for the first time since 2003. And they are doing the job right now. On Emirates Team New Zealand. They beat them the other day in a practice race by 10 seconds. They go around the top gate. They'll be intrigued to know what that advantage will be. A bit more than that, considering the touchdown by Emirates Team New Zealand at that bottom gate. But the way they go, American Magic. Still a 15 degree right here, just to Much lower aspect jib than the Kiwis. Emirates Team New Zealand are coming towards three, the left mark in the top gate one, and it's 25 down. plus seconds behind American Magic. You can tell by the upbeat mood on that boat, they are not giving up. They will throw everything at this. 
Interesting that they that the Americans. I think it's very light air in that upper right. Uh, as we were just looking at the screen, that right hand corner. So both boats get out of that side pretty quick. Surely, is it is it obviously light where they were going? It, I can't tell you how close to the shore it is. <laughs> I mean, this course is crowbarred into the harbour. It really is. There is no margin. Uh, and the same at the bottom mark, you know, literally the boats have about three seconds and they'll be on the beach. So they're very, very close. The land is high and sometimes it's a big path and sometimes there's nothing. You know, they're very, very difficult um, conditions there. Shirley, it sounds like it's a sailor's race out there right now. Yes, the, the speed differences of the, the equipment might be making it easier or harder, but if you're not in the right place at the right time and you're not executing your manoeuvres and capitalising on the, the weather around you, you're going to lose. So definitely a sailor's race happening on the water from what I can see here. I agree. This is a, this is a great race venue. I mean, loads of... Loads of opportunities. Uh, it reminds me a bit of Sydney Harbour. You know, lots going on. You can almost, you can almost smell the city of Auckland here, and you can hear the people on North Head. You know, it's it's all on, and uh, yeah, there is nowhere to hide on this racetrack. 360 odd metres between the two yachts. It is American Magic, Patriot leading Emirates Team New Zealand. They have a strongest speed downwind, as we have said before, sitting on just over 40 knots as opposed to 38. They're not getting further behind right now, Nathan. Uh, this is a bit of a comeback yep. Yep. with the Kiwis, and whether that is tactical or whether that is uh, in speed, I'm sure we'll uh, we'll be able to figure out some of that later on. Sure is, they sure look far ahead though when they're yeah, looking yeah. through this angle, don't they, the, the boat in front. Yeah, it looks can be deceiving from different yeah, camera back, angles. But, but right okay. now, you, you're right, that. They've matched jibes down this run. They're, they're pretty much following. The distances hasn't been changing too much. You know, perhaps maybe they brought in a little bit of extra wind down. But one thing is, is that you know the wind for these guys is not necessarily coming behind and catching. And they're actually sailing through the puffs downwind. So all it takes, as we saw on the first run, is American Magic to sail out of the front of pressure, and Emirates Team New Zealand will actually slowly catch them up as they go down. So. That's why I think, you know, you, you've got to be on your game. You've got to pick the shifts, and it's not easy out there. But, gee, one small mistake can be so costly, so costly. And Henny Corder was four, 500 metres, and American Magic were away. It's now 460-odd metres as American Magic heads into the bottom gate and will start the final lap that completes four legs. Remember, three times up or down. Six legs, three laps. And Dean Barker just steers them around that right-hand mark and head up towards on the upward leg for the final time. It'll be interesting to see if these guys try that other... They are going to try it. They're going to try to do a, a last-second jive right at this mark to create a split right away. They're still, they're still racing, there's no question. They're still doing hard maneuvers. And on those numbers, it was 20 seconds. They've picked up at least Emirates Team New Zealand five seconds on the downward leg. And they've split the course, so they're out of face, so they're giving himself an opportunity to get back into it. And just looking at the angles of that gate, it looked like they took the favoured mark, you know, sailing less distance, out of face. All they need now is a little left-hand shift, and that could be coming off that boundary in great shape. We're going to have to ask Marcelino Botin at some stage, but that that boat is shaped like a whale, if you ask me. I mean, like that beautiful feature of a of a whale, of the underbody of a whale. What sort of whale? I was going to say uh, sperm whale. Looks a bit sperm whaley to me. And by the way, I say that with all due respect. I can hear all my friends at home saying, "Don't call my boat a whale." Well, no, I'm saying that in all due respect. It's like you, you say something shaped like a beautiful wing of a, of a bird, of a fast bird. Well, it, it does. It has this incredible feature to it, doesn't it? These guys look slick, don't they? They've, they launched their boat first from memory. They've done the most hours in their, their race boat out of all the teams. And I think the most hours out of their uh, practice boat as well that they call the mule. 
These guys don't go away, though, do they? <laughs> Somebody like just on 400 metres down, when it was the gap, now it's almost to shave that in half. And Emirates Team New Zealand with superior speed going upwind. Can they run down American Magic? Ah, oh, here we go. Tack no, no, no. Tacking duel upwind. We've got a tacking duel for all you people that said it couldn't happen. It's like a 12 meter race, except different. They're talking about let's do the same. That means they just want to stay in phase. A lot of times the boat leading is, is willing to give up a little bit of distance in order to take away the big gain from the guy behind. So let, let's tack, tack, tack. Let's stay with them between your, your opponent and the hoop. So what's the play, Nathan, by Emirates Team New Zealand? What are they able to do heading to the top gate for the last time? Just got to keep tacking. Keep, you know, when they're on the lifted tack take a bit of a game. The more you tack, the more they're going to tack. You're trying to draw an error out of your competitor here right now. So they're going to roll into attack, and American Magic are just going to match him here straight away. And what these guys are getting right now is valuable data. Who's gaining the most or losing the most in the tax? To me, it looks like New Zealand have resolved whatever problem they had earlier, and they're coming back into them here slowly. American Magic haven't done the greatest of tax. Still on the foil, but... You know, if I was Pete Burling right now, I'd be going, oh, well, let's do bow. another one. Yeah, let's keep putting him under pressure. Okay. So yeah, what's the apparent wind angle on these boats right now, Nathan? Super narrow. It'd be in, a, in and around 15, no. uh, like no, 11 no. degrees probably. So in a normal boat, the Kiwis are in the bad air of American magic, but in a boat like this, uh, it's not the, even close. You almost have to be in front. Tack, you, you, you have to yeah. tack directly yeah, in front yeah. to affect them. If you are like a boat Probably. length to win with it, you, you've got fresh air. Yes, that's you, but there were some concerned faces saying, how can American magic hold on with Emirates Team New Zealand staying to put the pressure on the penultimate leg? I agree with something Nathan said, that Dean is not a very vocal guy usually. You've heard some tension in his voice maybe a little bit during this race, and just the fact that they are not letting them out of their sights right now means they got a, they think they got a race on their hands. Yeah. Well, considering what team is in the head, what were appeared to be issues, gear issues at the start of this race, to get back into this race after that, that poor rounding, Flashing down 400 meters, and they're well back in the hunt. Yeah, but yep. this is where they're going to be kicking themselves for trying to take that risky move the first time around that, that uh, gate number two, that risky move that cost them a lot. Man, if, if Team New Zealand are on ley line here at the top mark and America have gone further, we've got a big potential for an overlap coming to the top mark and a lead change. So. I can't see from this angle, but man, he's definitely coming in. You know, they're inside 80 metres now. You can hear the pressure being mounted all the time here. Just pressing the pressure valve. Surely we wanted a race. We got a race. It's so exciting. <laughs> It's fantastic, and the Kiwis are coming right back into it. Actually, when they tagged, they tagged in a lull, the Kiwis. They didn't execute it quite as well as we've been used to seeing them do. And, and the Americans, he might be excited, but he's keeping a calm head. I mean, their maneuvers have been exceptional on this leg. American magic. They, they tack, so do Emirates Team New Zealand. Could be that inside overlap that Nathan was talking about. Top gate for the last time, watching closely, left mark. They got it, they got the inside overlap and they're not gonna, be, they have no reason to bear off until they want to. Wow, one bad tack by the Americans. Emirates Team New Zealand take the lead in both protests. You're kidding me, Archie. Dean Barker just went one boat length too far. If he had to just tack that one boat length earlier, this that situation the never would have Penalty developed. Penalty USA, but cleared. Penalty USA, but cleared. And now Team New Zealand do a bad job out of all of that. So Team New Zealand got the lead, got the penalty, drew the penalty, but now they're off their foils. Dean Barker there and the team are going to jive on the boundary. It looks a little lighter over there, but they've been foiling and ripping the whole time. This race has just come alive. I'm really surprised they they left control right there. Team New Zealand had control and they jived out of it right away. They must really think it's light air in that upper corner of the race course. 
so high, my uh, They yeah. lost control again. I mean, nah, look at that. Exactly. I reckon the Americans got out of that. You know, they made the error, and then Team New Zealand just jived and, and gave the race back to them again. And a protest. And they and they burned off a protest. So. Well, it's not, it's not over yet. You know, you can see there's a lot of pressure between the two boats there. It's not over yet. Inside overlap coming up to this gate mark, taking a left turn. Inside overlap by Emirates Team New Zealand. They don't have to turn around. And then all of a sudden, they extend away. They push the button. The Americans actually had a, had a protest against them, but they jived out of it. I thought they would have clean air coming out of that maneuver, and they could have stayed in that spot. But obviously, they thought otherwise, and here we go, another pass. Not much in this race still. It's still very close, and they're, they're split tacks right now. I like the look of where Dean Barker's going. He's going into more pressure. That, that side of the race course always looks like it's had more wind. Shirley's, what can you see on the water? Is there one side that's got better pressure right now? Yeah, I agree. I mean, all day I've liked the, the right-hand side, and uh, Dean's just sailing into to more and more wind over there. The other beauty he's got right now is he's jibing onto starboard tack, which means when the boats come back together here, he's going to have the right of way. The real question is, can Emirates Team New Zealand get to the final ley line to get, can they do it in one more jibe? Or do they have to do it in two more? But right now, it's looking like the balance has shifted back to the Patriot here. It looks like the Americans have got the lead and have got some composure and are just placing the boat between their competitors and the finish. <laughs> and we do know that the USA have shown strong downward speed, which you can see on the bottom left of the screen there. It is a real race, the final race on day one of the America's Cup World Series between two teams that have picked up a winner piece on the stage. Americans are faster right now. They're just faster, simply faster. Three knots faster. And starboard tack advantage, and it looks like they're laying the lines. So this is this is going to be a tough one for the, the Kiwis. I think both teams are going to think they gave this one away at some stage, but a win is a win is a win. Emirates Team New Zealand certainly had the crack at that top gate for the last time. They got the inside running on the left-hand mark and then just gave it away. And well done, though, by the Americans. So it's American magic. Get the win of the Battle of the Heavyweights on day one. They beat Emirates Team New Zealand, and the supporters are more than happy. And why wouldn't you be? What a race to complete the opening day. Emirates Team New Zealand crossed the line. 12 seconds, the clock says. At one stage, it was 25 seconds. They certainly came back. Perfect example of what this America's Cup is all about. If you can't fight back, don't be in this game. Well, three, three uh, passes. This is the, for, for us as commentators, my friends, that is, that is all we want is passes because it makes for a really exciting race. And the people who created these boats, uh, two great teams out there on the water, this is what we're looking for is fun, exciting match racing. There were people tacking on each other going up the beat. What a concept. That was awesome action, guys. I on the edge of my seat and as soon as Team New Zealand started getting back into that race and the tacking drill began and the overlap at the top mark, man, we can dissect this race for hours. And you know these guys will be, there's no question about that. Let's go into the water as uh, Blair Chuk and Peter Burling have a quiet chat with each other. Is it, Shirley, you said earlier on in the day that American Magic, they were hot, their downward speed is hot. Yeah, they've got wheels when the breeze is up. There's there's no question there. And to me, they just got faster and faster as it, as it went on. And actually, looks, you know, they didn't make many mistakes. So the maneuvers were clean as well. And in that race, you know, the mistakes were, were largely the Kiwis. Early on in that race, the Kiwis did not look settled. Something was going on, but they obviously, they obviously managed to fix it and get going. But you know, what a boost to this American team. What a, what a race that was for them and a, a great first day here in Auckland. Well, that's two from two, guys. Yeah. You include two the practice racing from the other day. Risky maneuver, though, walking around at a very pro Kiwi waterfront with an American flag, what kind of stirring it up. I, I'm that, not... That's OK, because there's a Kiwi on the American boat. So we'll, we'll balance that okay. and go to Dean Barker right now. Dean, <laughs> hell of a race. Congratulations. Great win. I had a nice little lead and then uh... 
Uh, they, they did a nice job coming back into, uh, into it all. So, um, yeah. We sort of uh, let them sort of play through. Carry on and... Um, Our apologies there. Day one gremlins, you might call it, but you saw one thing that was quite obvious on Dean Barker's face, Kenny, a smile. Smile. What a concept. <laughs> it, 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 that's fantastic. Listen, good for these guys. They've had, like Nathan said earlier, they've had more time in the water through all of their different boats than anybody. Probably relied less on the simulator and, and less on that kind of technology and did it the old-fashioned way. They've had time in the water and they look like it. They're sailing smooth. Confirmation of the last race of the opening day of the Prada America's Cup World Series. American Magic have the perfect day. Two from two. And they win and beat Team New Zealand by 12 seconds. Here we go to so some of the statistics in the race. So upwind speeds go the Americans way. Downwind speed goes the American way. So let's go to distance sailed and sure enough, distance sail goes the Kiwis way. Those are the three big numbers that we're always looking for. And sure enough, when you average all those two things out, it comes out to 12 seconds. Really close race where a, a mistake will cost you. And, and that's what we saw and that's what we hope to see more of. That's just fantastic stuff. That last rounding must be just annoying Peter Burling right now when they had the advantage. Look at the race speed here, Kenny. Yeah, some big dips. So you look around leg two, there's that crash. Uh, sorry, mark number two, that crash where uh, in the first downwind leg going around this mark, that's where they fell off their foils. And uh, and that's really tough. These spots are where they fell off their 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 uh, foils. And that's not good. That's where that's where the mistakes were made. And that's what ended up costing them. So the win to American Magic, representing the New York Yacht Club, Peter Burling, the helm on Emirates Team New Zealand is standing by to, to have a quick chat. Got to say, Pete, great race. Yeah, we definitely, um, you know, didn't make life easy for ourselves on that one. We kind of, you know, had a little bit of an issue before the start and then kind of compounded into trying a few too many, uh, I suppose, tricky manoeuvres on my behalf. But... No, it was great to see, you know, what the boat could do and, you know, to be able to make that many mistakes and still be in the race is, you know, pretty pleasing for the weeks ahead. Hey, Pete, it, it, you guys haven't raced in a long time. Nobody's really raced in a long time. It's been such a strange year. Is some of the, could some of this also be a little bit of rust or, or, or not? Yeah, we were having a few little issues in that, that last one, for sure. Um, you know, I think if you looked at our performance, it definitely wasn't as polished as the first. But, you yeah, know, for us, the positive thing was just the boat was going super quick. Um, you know, it was good to have a bit of interaction at the top mark. Uh, kind of ended up... I thought they got a penalty, but they didn't seem very far behind us. So I'll we'll have to go back and review and have a look at what happened. Yeah, Pete, it's Nath here. Um, it looked like you guys took control at the, at the very top mark there. And, you know, as we said, the... The penalty did go to them. Are you surprised how much you were gaining in the tax as you were coming out to them on that beat? Yeah, well, it felt like we were gaining pretty nicely in a straight line and, and, and nicely in the tax. So, you know, I think the pleasing thing for us is that, you know, just had to keep it a bit more simple than we did and um, just say a little bit more polished. But, you know, it's really, uh, I suppose, pleasing if you can make that many mistakes and, you know, still be able to have a, a good nudge at the last top mark and yeah I'm still not quite sure what happened there we kind of wobbled our way through a pretty ropey job and then uh, thought thought I heard they got a penalty but uh, not, still not quite sure what happened. So P, P one more question sorry uh, going around that mark you get around on the inside you hear that they have a penalty technically you're ahead your apparent wind is ahead of them why the quick jive why not just try to control them right out to the edge of the race course? Yeah um you know, I think we just need to go back and have a look at what happened there. Was still, uh, yeah, we, we were obviously struggling when they kind of, you know, half skidded into us. Uh, you know, we had a few issues of our own getting through the bearway. So, you know, we thought the best thing to do was just to get out of there and make sure the boats didn't make contact. But, yeah, we'll be keen to go back and have a look at what happened. Got it. All right, Pete, thanks for your time. Look forward to seeing you on the water tomorrow, race number two on day two. Eddie, thanks, mate. Cheers.
Let's go back and have one final look at the final race of the day. The Kiwis struggled during this whole uh, pre-start, Nathan, because they, as Peter said, they had some issues and they were trying to fix them. And good for them for actually getting control of their issues because they got themselves back into the race. But during this whole, uh, they were late coming into the box. They were uh, late getting to the starting line. They, they were off their foils a fair chunk of time. And, gave uh, American Magic the head start that, well, we all love to see, but it didn't make for a great race early on. No, it looked like they were really struggling early, not just the pre-start, but as they were going upwind, it looked like they were struggling. And this is the thing that I, you know, find super interesting, the, the speeds at which these boats have when they bear away and the concentration on the faces of the drivers and the guys flying these boats and looks funny. And then you get a big puff and you hold on for dear life and then the boat settles down again and it's that that's an amazing feeling when you're driving those boats and here's the real issue of the race team new zealand were keeping it close and then they go for this round up into attack they drop the foil on the exit of this tack and it doesn't go well for them it looks like they don't get the grip they're looking for on that foil they lose the lift and then the whole boat just drops a tricky, tricky maneuver, and I think that's what Peter was uh, referring to. Is they, they, he tried to do a couple things that, you know, the, your uh, your your body can't cash, and and all of a sudden they they dropped. We thought it was race over until, wow, a comeback. One little bad tack by the Americans at the top, an inside overlap, and a foul by the Americans. But like I said, I was really surprised. They got a little skittish here. Everybody's, both boats are a little skittish. So they decide just to jive out of there. Yeah, there's a lot. Listen, there's spectator boats right there. That, you know, going 40 knots in that spot. I'm guessing they got a little bit on their minds. Well, preserve the assets, but make the mistake. And the Americans go on to win the race. And, and good for them. Uh, that time in the boat seems to be paying off right now in these early stages in, uh, in, in in what is going to be a long, long event. opening day of the America's Cup World Series. Emirates Team New Zealand with the win over Team Ineos UK by three minutes and 30 seconds. And then it's a five minute win by the USA over Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. Ineos UK, race three, not a great day. Gear issues with their foil can system and Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli are awarded the win and in the most exciting race of the day, the two heavyweights, you might say, this early, early stage, American Magic beats Te Reho Tai. So the results, a point for the win. And look at that, American Magic, perfect job. Emirates Team New Zealand, Luna Rusa, Prada Pirelli get the point piece, and Ineos Team UK yet to get on the board. But tomorrow is another day. And tomorrow we'll see, first up, Luna Rusa against Patriot. Emirates Team New Zealand against Britannia. And then race three will be American Magic against Luna Rosa. Looking forward to that one. Really looking forward to that one. The final race of the day, Enios Team UK against Emirates Team New Zealand. That's day two of the Prada America's Cup World Series. And that completes the final day. I'll start, Nathan, first of all with you. What did you make of the day's racing? What stood out? Well, what stood out for me is we, we had a fantastic final race, you know, the, the racing was super close. The boats looked awesome out on the water, and, and it was a great venue for, for the first day to kick things off. Any Real racing is a real possibility here. A new class of boat very often. You're really nervous that you're going to just get five-minute leg, five-minute lead after five-minute lead. Now, all of a sudden, we have proof that we can have real racing in the fastest boats in the world. Quickly onto the water, Shirley Robinson, what stood out for you today? 
Well, we saved the best to last, Stephen. And what a tease for what's to come over the coming months. These boats are only going to get faster and better and stronger as it means more and more. Can't wait. And that completes day number one of the Prada America's Cup World Series on the Watamata Harbour. What a sight it makes. But there is so much more to come. And guess what? You ain't seen nothing yet. We will see you tomorrow at 3 o'clock local time for day two. Today's America's Cup Racing is brought to you from Auckland, New Zealand. Thank you.